in folks welcome in thank you all so much for waiting i surely do appreciate it sorry for that extended introduction there we had a lot of stuff we had to figure out with our uh, our new mechs we all got new mechs that we like half of us are rolling out with new mechs anyway uh so we had a lot of stuff we had to go over thank you for waiting i love you red what's happening Hey folks, what's up? Welcome back to Lancer Desperado episode 9. I'm really glad to be back into the uh, Lancer universe. I've been doing a lot of deep diving. I've been, uh, I'm kind of a big fan of uh, Massive Press's work. Like, I've been like just deep diving into everything. I like the writing, I like the art. You know, it's a, it's a two person team too. So that's really inspiring for me. And Elise, who are also a two person team working on our own game. So it's just Hell like, if yeah. they can do it, so can we, and we will. Uh, right. weird, buddy, you got this. I believe in you. <clears throat> I believe in me too. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm red, I'm one of the three primary colors. I'm going to be your game master this evening. Uh, I am a content creator on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, respectively, you can find me on Twitch, uh, Redemption VA, and you can find me on Twitter at VA Redemption. Uh, I do all, I do a multitude of things. If you need anything done that's even remotely related to a board game, a TTRPG, I could probably do it. Um, <clears throat> and my prices are fair. But other than that, I'd like to toss over the introductions to the players. I think we can start with, let's start with Omni. Oh, starting off with me. All right. Yeah. Hey there, everyone. I'm the last Omnitech, your favorite robot American. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys can catch me on you know my channel doing my own thing but we'll deal with that later i am playing uh gentry Dolan, also known as arbalest on this channel everyone's favorite artillerist and uh yeah keep an eye out for me i'm in the i'm in the everest everyone likes to call junkie but actually puts out damage numbers equal to god mm -hmm. so that's it doesn't me. mean it's not tacky as shit <laughs> <laughs> says the Says the person in literal flaming armor. Excuse me for being mm -hmm. understated with my giant robot. There ain't yeah, nothing tacky. Uh, like, mm. I got fucking style, baby. Sorry, particle accelerators that can open you up with one shot aren't in style. Anyway. <laughs> that's me. Well, speaking of tacky flames, uh, let's go to Arkin. Natalie. Ooh. Oof. Damn. No, ta no, she literally lays down sticky flames now. Like that, that's literally part of her fucking kit. That's <laughs> okay. They're <laughs> tacky and it's flames. Yeah, they're sticky. Well, I'm Natalie and I'm playing Arkin, the uh, actress wannabe Lancer. Uh, she's just kind of doing this for exposure and to study a role so she can play Lancer in a movie and win a space Oscar and be even more Oscar, famous. If a you will. Oscar. <laughs> yeah. A Sposcar for short. Or a Spemmy. A Spemmy. Either, Either one. Will Either will do. She, she just wants to win some award. Maybe a Spammy if she gets into yep. music. Or a, yep. uh, a Spenny if she starts streaming online. Sorry, I can't <laughs> stop myself. No, please do go on. I don't have to go on. <laughs> any board at this point. But, yeah. That was all I had. <laughs> Alright, uh, that is... A spony if she gets into music. Mm. At least, would you like to do your intro after that horrible fucking <laughs> continuation of that dead joke? Go on, please. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Belize. You can find me on Twitter at Alistair. I am an artist and a blogger, and my commissions are currently open, so if you'd be interested in having amazing character art similar to what you see over my face for my character Shuki, shoot me a DM and we can talk. Um, uh, I am very sick, so I might be up and down throughout tonight, so I apologize in advance. No worries at all. We value health over gameplay. Yeah, appreciate you being here, even though you're not feeling well, dude. Absolutely. I would much rather be here eating pizza and laughing <laughs> at y'all being stupid <laughs> than laying in bed watching YouTube and being miserable, so. That's fair. That's fair. That makes me feel good. And obviously last, but <laughs> of course not least, Derek. Oh, I thought you were going to say least, of course. Uh... Well, you <laughs> are, but I, I want to be kind, so go That's on, fair. please. Uh, <laughs> hi guys, I'm Derek. Uh, I'm playing Rikard, uh, call sign Black Knight. I have a new mech. Um, 
If you are familiar with um, Dancer of the Boreal Valley, then you might like what you see. Uh, I'm really excited. I got a lot of fucking cool tricks. I'm really hyped to use them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's uh, <clears throat> sorry. He uh, he comes from a, uh, a a noble house from a faraway sector uh, that he is intent on uh, returning to wage war on the corporation that has effectively bought it out from under the people that uh, you know live there. Indeed. I didn't realize we were giving character back, right? <laughs> I thought yeah, everybody else did. Did everybody else did a little bit? I didn't. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't have to do a character introduction for everyone. But <clears throat> that said, we do have to do a recap. Uh, we don't have to do a giant recap. Maybe just the past session or two. Uh, whoever gives me that, I will give you. I'll give you. License level. Fuck uh. oh, no. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you something. I'll think of something. Don't worry. It'll be worth it. I'll give you a reserve of some kind. I won't say what. Oh. It'll be free. You don't have to take a downtime action to get it. How, so how far back or do you want us to... A session or two. Okay, um... Give me the brief detail on like what happened with the HA and now. That would be okay. good. Well, basically what happened is we decided we needed to get our hands on Fencer ASAP. Because, <laughs> like, lots of random shit was going down and we figured he would have the information that we needed to figure out what the hell was going on. But we got headed off by the HA, who infiltrated Mary Reed's ship, killed pretty much all of her people, put her son in traction, and told us, um, the... What was his name? I have it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. uh Captain Cesaro Umezana. Yep. Oh yeah, let me put his hand out up. Yes, For he. Them folks at home. Uh, he told us do something about Fencer, we'll blow up the planet. Um, <laughs> basically. Well, uh, yeah, I mean that's <laughs> okay. Not those words exactly, but close enough. Uh, sure, go on, please. This is a player recap. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so yeah, um. We went to go do something about Fencer, but unbeknownst to us, our good idiot, um, <laughs> Riker <laughs> made a deal with him, and Fencer faked his death. We had, like, a showdown that we thought, uh, Natalie, or uh, Arkin went viral for putting him in the <laughs> meat locker. That was fun. The meat locker. And we found out that Riker <laughs> kind of double-crossed us. Yep. Like, not like. I paid and, you though. Um, I did share in the no, money. We do. We get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping my money is sort of arbitrary in this. Yep. Very much like if you guys know Fortune in the Dark, the money is the principle. Sort of, yes, it's about the principle more than it is about the actual dollar amount. So if you guys are keeping track of your money, you don't have to. You can just say that, hey, I got paid a handsome sum. And it's just like, okay, do whatever you want with it within reason. So, I believe I already used all of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so as well. At least is that it for your recap, or would you like? Uh, to... No, I'll, I'll wrap up with the end of the session, and then we found out that Fencer was in fact alive, and we got some information out of him, and that was the real dirt on what was going on. Is that this planet was basically being turned into an SSC hive world for their biotech and everyone was gonna die if we didn't exterminate the hive indeed okay that's uh, I'll, I'll give one reserve to you and uh, you know what I got an idea I'll give you a reserve and you can bullshit me you can tell me whatever kind of reserve it is and, and tell me whatever it does whenever you need it it'll be a wild card cool cool that sounds like that'll be fun to pull out Yep. I've been very inspired by uh, last night's Forge in the Dark game. I really like bullshit cards. God, I am a so man cool. that loves bullshit cards, especially as a as, as a game master. I like it when my player... I don't... I'm not encouraging my players to outsmart me. I'm encouraging my players to think outside the box. Same. Same. You know, yeah, because it's not like... 
me oh, like versus shit. you, the DM. It's... Because you're never going to outsmart me because I can literally just say I had a contingency for this too, and I and I, just even though I didn't. So that's not the point of the game. It's for <laughs> you guys to feel you know achieved yeah. and. Anyone out there who thinks that it's, there, it's them, players versus GM, I have a bad bit of news for you folks. GM it can is. always roll more dice. Mm -hmm. It is right. players versus the GM. <laughs> you can't win D&D. You win if you keep playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Where's win the... by having a successful story and a fun jaunt with your friends. Yeah, that is true. Page Why didn't you just let me page. say that, Red? Why do you have to break what I was? Fuck you. Anyway, so... <laughs> Hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> I love you. Don't you. Know me. Let's have a great game together now. Go fuck love you me. too, buddy. Let's fucking get in there. Tap the side. <laughs> oh, God. Where's the page on resources? I can't find it. Uh, it'll be... So you go to your... Useful bookmarks. I think it's under downtime activities. I believe. Resources. I or think you're right. Because it's one of the things you can cultivate. Mm. Mm, yeah, I found it. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, who else wants to continue the recap? There's really not that much else to recap. So if like one of you wants to give me the rest of it, that'd be fine too. Whoever wants to ace up their sleeve. Go ahead, guys. Uh, Natalie, unless you want to go, I'll take it. Go for it. Um, so as we said, I kind of double crossed the party, but not really. Um, I cut them in on what was going on. Uh, kind of got into it a little bit with um, one of the um, one of the other fellows here, uh, basically just trying to get under his skin and prod him into getting angry and doing something rash, uh, or at least getting him riled up enough and then pointed in the right direction because he was being really lethargic and I was like, yeah, it doesn't vibe with me. This is like an all or nothing deal. Um, let's see. Paid all the money that I just got into outfitting the uh, the frigate and getting it. It was already basically space worthy, uh, but getting it outfitted with like weapons arrays and um, I believe it already had a, a like a facility and a docking station for our mechs. Um, but you know, just getting everything uh, a once over, and then then Suki and I got to work making a. Uh, a kind of virus specifically for these um, techno bugs. We uh, we began making a uh, abomination that probably violates several uh, human rights or non-human person uh, not yeah non-human person rights uh, tribunals. Um, but you know, for the greater good and all that shit. Um, and you ever think was... Riker and Suki give a shit about yeah. that? No. No. We're seeing a little bit more eye to eye these days. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was it. Very good. Have <clears throat> yourself a reserve. Um... <laughs> okay. I want to talk about Omni's downtime because Omni was sneaking around trying to gather information and dispatched somebody. Yes. Um, so I had two things that happened in mine. For starters, I know for a fact that we have one of uh, Gentry's been trying to reach out to his people and his people specifically being the folks back in Euphrates, which is his home system. And he's been trying to see if he can just sort of assess how things are there, if it's time for him to go back and start fighting or not. And he recently made contact with a young Euphradian soldier who is um, basically a new generation of uh, the protectors, which is what he is. So Sentinel, who is apparently on the way at some point soon, within the next couple of weeks, um, or I think it's within this week actually, is when he was going to arrive. Whereas for that, he also been doing a bit of research trying to find out more about the uh, biotech swarm and the threat it represents. And uh, he basically got discovered digging deep in that by a kid who ran some like young like clerk, 20 something year old clerk managing the uh, server rooms to which he killed and then buried out in the desert to avoid attracting any attention. So that happened. But I did get basically what I was looking for. That was the trade-off. I had to either kill someone or 
<clears throat> basically explain myself away or frame someone. It's one of the two. So I chose yeah. to kill someone. You found some pretty critical information, and uh, we'll go ahead and pick up where we left off with that. So this will be uh, the next day of you probably deciphering information. And uh, the information that you were able to decipher were was a potential hot zone. You're not sure what that means, but it's just, uh, it, it has exact coordinates of this potential hot zone. And that's about it. This could mean a, any number of things. This could mean it's a bandit hideout. This could mean it's some sort of like pl breeding ground. You're not sure. Um, I might be tempted to use that reserve you just gave me. Hey, by all means, there's no time limit on it. <laughs> okay. Is uh, Gentry sharing that with the... If if Gentry would allow... Uh, sorry, I, for, I forgot that you said that that was just him. I'm sorry, I'm trying to learn what reserves are really quick. And then I came in at the moment. Um, you can see the table on page 51. Oh, I have it open see? on CompCon. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. He, I think he... So, Red, I just want to run, run that by me one more time. So, we there's a... We found a hot spot. The, the scanners found a hot spot. It could yeah. be anything. It's basically a hot spot of activity. Yeah, it's a hot spot of activity. That's what you know. And uh, maybe that would help you in your endeavors trying to uh, dispatch these the swarm. Maybe you found a hive pit because the heat signatures aren't exactly high. Right. There's a lot okay. of movement. So once he figures that out, I think he would call the party, or at least like a, a meeting of the party, probably with our, we should probably meet with our new backer as well, or at least like get him on calm to talk to him about it. So, but in the meantime, uh, he would call you guys together, probably somewhere nice and quiet where we're not going to get interrupted, and offer everyone coffee and just put the data pad on the table. Just go. Well. I appear to have found something of potential value. A little hot spot out here, middle of nowhere. Seems like there's a fair bit of activity, but low thermal readings. So, lots of bodies, likely. Could be a could be a hive network or a hive node. Couldn't tell you. Scanners aren't very thorough out here. They don't really exactly have a high quality level corpo tech. But it's a start. Well, uh, should we scout ahead, or do you think that we should just deploy en masse? Mm, no, we should get some bots to scout it out. We need Wait. to engage as little as possible with the hive. I agree. Definitely want eyes on that target. Something that we can confirm. It, it wouldn't be a bad idea for us to consider a recon mission to it. Someone we... Folks who know we're fast, at very least. So... I don't think we should send people. I think we should send some bots. I could See, I would... Leon go with the, uh, the crux. That would be the... The bot. Mac. You see, I'm a little worried about the idea of sending out drones that might agitate the hive either. It can work both ways. But who's to say they're going to ignore the drones? They didn't ignore Mex. Suki would pinch the bridge of her nose. The drones are not going to combat the hive. The only thing they're going to be learning is what our drones look like. I'd say we set up a self-destruct switch so we can just blow up the smithereens if they get a hold of them. Oh, <laughs> Poor little guys. <laughs> I, I believe Suki means, like, automated drones as in toasters, not as in, like, self-aware drones, like, helpy. Oh, okay then. Yeah. Alright, that's fair. We should look into it, but we should be ready to move out quickly then, just in case what we find is something of value. 
So. Ricky, do you think you can put that together real quick? Yes, who? You. Uh, if I could put what together? Some drones to go scout it out? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to use my resource to do that? Because I was going to say um, I could use my resource for us to have a couple of options. Um, and I was going to open I mean, like, it up to the table. You could probably just like make a hacker fix check. I bet Nick would like you to do that. Could I do that, Nick? Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to make you take a downtime action to slap together some drones. So that's above hey, you succeed. You put together drones that'll probably last at least a day. You know, you load in some cheap batteries that you found from places that you don't want to admit that you took them from. And um, <clears throat> they're good to go. Yeah, I'll send um, like live video feedback to uh, the ship where we... Are we on the ship or are we on the planet side at this point? I know we're developing the NHP on the ship because I cannot risk that getting free planet side. Right. Uh, I wasn't aware we were even operating under the ship yet. So if we are, I'm down with it. Just, you know. I thought we were on the ship for a few scenes last session. You were. It, it, it depends on you guys. I'm fine with that. If that's the case. And yeah, no, we wouldn't need to go anywhere in Jago City to talk. We could just literally be on the ship in like a command deck or something where we know we'd be private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty bare works. bones still. It's not like really nice or anything yet. I haven't invested in anything other than like military prowess and like stealth capabilities for the ship. Right. Well, I suppose that's fine. I'd still feel better. I'd still feel better if we had a handler for the drones, at least close enough to observe from a distance. So, contention on what we learn, um, I could use that reserve to have us like dropped in from orbit uh, at a strategic p spot on the map. Um, I could call in for a bombardment during the uh, during the mission. Um, yeah, ambush. Um, just fucking nuke. Things. Just just nuke them. Yeah, I was thinking I could just save, save maybe if it's like a, a, a nest that we could do some damage to, we could just call in a bombardment from orbit um, and, you know, maybe buy some more time or something for the effort planet side. If it is a nest, I'm going to recommend we collect some samples. That I agree. Yeah. We don't know very much about these things or how they operate. We should learn before we strike. You're right. It'll help us uh, with the demon. We should definitely scan them to see if they're connected to the hive mind and if they're giving away location information and stuff like that. Okay. Let's do that. Well, if that's what we're sweet. spending the uh, the scout on. I don't know what we're spending the scout role that I just did on. I don't know what that means. Um, you made the drones. That's all the role you need to make. Okay. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you make a specific role for the drones. I will tell you what. Uh, I will tell you what the drones see. So you're standing in the mouth of this hotspot. This hotspot's quite a ways out. It's like a good few hours. So your drones are moving at a decent pace, but they're not exactly breakneck. You rolled a thirteen, not a, anything higher than that, or thirteen plus your whatever your hack and fix is for. Mm. Let's see. That's gonna be on my tactical profile. Probably narrative. narrative profile. Yeah, narrative. Um, act unseen or unheard, uh, or read a situation, or take control. Um, I could see it being any of those. Or read a situation, in which case it would be either a plus four or a plus six. No, I mean, like, would you roll to with the bots, like the drones, to like put together drones? Uh, get a hold of something. Does that work? It's yeah, that done. tracks. That's fine. <laughs> so <What>? the, uh... <laughs> That's fine. You don't need to roll again. That, 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 how, uh, what's your modifier to that? Let me make it a seventeen total. That's, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Your your drones, like I said, they're they're not state of the art, uh, state of the. Wow, is that a brain fart? Uh, 
anyway, <laughs> they're not exact. They're not state of the art, but they're going to be good enough to like get out there. They're not going to be super quick. It'll probably take them an hour to get out there. Uh, but what they see is this uh, very clear desert out, out west of the city. Very clear, open desert. And then there's just this real sudden, giant, gaping maw in the middle of it. It's not, it doesn't look like a sinkhole. It looks like something was like purposely dug in. And then there's like earth and sandstone like jutting out. So basically, it looks like an enormous, like, lion ant hill. No, it's down. Yeah. Ant lion hills are down. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what an ant lion is. I'm gonna be honest. An ant lion is. An ant lion is. They dig like little. Uh, they dig like little divots in the sand, like literally like an inverse pyramid or like. Oh, a they're like like a sarlacc. They're reverse. Pit. So yeah, like they pit, literally yeah. dig little sarlacc pits and they sit at the bottom and they beat their hands against their little legs against the side. So when an ant goes to the edge, they slide down the sand and then they just sort of nom them. So they're like barely that's the size a, of pencil lead. Perfect description. <laughs> a little tiny sarlacc pit. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> when you said antlion, the only thing I could think of were the antlions from Half Life. But uh... Uh, uh, there's a picture of one. Right. In, in the the big crushing oh, force cool. is uh, the crushing force of their little pincers can like even like break human skin. It's pretty intense. That's yeah. fucking wild, Jesus. But they're pretty chill, weirdly. Like I've held them in my hand; they don't hurt. Depends on the ants. <laughs> Fire ants will bite. Mm, they hurt a bit. You know those fuckers <laughs> hurt. I've never yeah. had an ant lion hurt me. Ant lions are just ugly. I love they're, them. They're, they're adorable. They're, 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 ew, they're yucky. Anyway, this is Lancer. We're not talking about ant lions. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so as you, your drones come like sort of. I'll say there's two of them with like cameras on them. It's like like GoPro cameras, and they're like rolling up to the edge. And as it, as it turns to look down, instant cut off with the feed. Both so there's them? something there. Mm -hmm. One and okay, the one behind, like lagging behind the other one, sees one explode. And there's like weird pink mist, and then it quickly joins them. Dude just gets cut off. Like, I'm just gonna like very flatly say they have anti aircraft weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, it's like, it's just let's, not odd, like, okay. let's activate our anti aircraft weaponry then. I'm assuming we have Sun, being who we are. Yeah, but <laughs> Leviathan, they're underground. Our well, anti-aircraft weaponry wouldn't really deal much. It's also more anti-void weaponry. You know? Ships aren't really meant to break atmosphere, right, Nick? Ships? I mean... Or do you mean mechs? No, our, like our frigates. Like, they're not meant to break atmosphere, right? Like, they have to dock at, like, spaceports. I believe I remember you saying that before. No, no, they can... They can break atmosphere. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't we literally that. found ours in atmosphere. In fairness, I th it, it had crashed. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, no, it can it can come and go from an atmosphere. It doesn't need. Okay, cool. Special I thought they were there. too big. I thought they were too big to break atmosphere. Uh, no. and then in that case, um, yeah, still, uh, yeah, they're as far as we know, they're underground, uh, and we're in a starship. I don't think that you bring a starship to something like this. That's a bit <laughs> obscene. This is a boots on the ground sort of mission. Don't they know who we are? <laughs> no. They're bugs and fairness. So I'm not. I'm not particularly sure they know what anything <laughs> is, and I'm surprised you guys didn't think they would have anti-aircraft capacity. Well, now we know that, Obelisk. You have seen them fly. <laughs> He's literally been like, uh, since you guys were like drones. Arbalus just gestures to the narrator that nobody else can hear. It's like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think no. he's just listening to this argument slash conversation going, just like sipping from her copy mug, like, mm. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. Again, we could blow it open from orbit. It's a possibility. Or we uh, could how about it. Go ahead. That was it. Yes, but what else is it connected to? This is the problem. We don't know what else will collapse. We should drop in. I'm not particularly enthused about going underground, considering my weapons are primarily artillery. But you work with what you have. And frankly, if when we deal with these things all over the system, we should be planning for the worst case scenario. Which means we should know what we're fighting against in case we can't kill it in its crib. 
Mm. Are you familiar mm. with the term kicking an anthill? Yes, they, I am. They all kind of come out. The only thing I'm worried about is... If we drop in and we don't have anywhere to go... That's why I was sent the drones. I wanted to know what we were going to be up against. That's... In, but I'm worried about how do we get out. Well, if I might make a suggestion, there appears to be a perfectly serviceable exit right there. And he's going to point at the screen and pause it right before the screen cuts out at the giant hole in the ground. I'm willing to put money on the fact that's what, that's the way in and out. So we push in. If we need to get out, we just push backwards. They can be killed, so we know there's ways out and in. We just be cautious. Simple as that. Is it possible, uh, Ogre, that you... Perhaps with your contacts, planet side, activate some sort of seismic sensor to... <clears throat> locate alternative exits in case this one gets blocked off for us? I'm asking you above the table if you could use your resource to uh, locate... Potential other exits, basically. Would I need to? Could I make, like, an... Could I maybe make, like, an influence or efficiency roll with the ninth ring instead of using my reserve? Yeah. Let's go ahead and roll that for me. Okay, I'm gonna make an influence roll. D20 plus four. Hey, critic! Nice. nice. Okay, so tell me exactly what kind of information you you want to hear, and I'll give it okay. to you. Um, I am going to make. Okay, I, I I rolled influence. So I'm thinking. Um, probably. Probably what Suki's going to do is get in touch with someone. Um. Someone within the ninth ring to make a connection, probably with like um, a survey company, like a local survey company in Shago. Okay, that's gonna take a little bit, but it would you, you get the information that you need within like a day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you're willing, willing to wait a day, yeah, they'll get it to you. Yeah, so that that's what the, the yeah we're gonna get in touch with the survey company who can chart that without getting close. Sure, absolutely. Nice. Like I said, it's gonna take twenty four hours. So. Okay. Well, we got a twenty four hours to kill. What do you guys want to do in twenty four hours? No downtime. You're not getting a downtime in a single day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you a fair warning. This is going to be a campaign length mission. It's going to take more than one session. It might take more than two. Ooh. So use your things sparingly and smartly. I'm very intelligently. Glad. Smartly is not a word. Smart Smarty. I'm glad Tactically. That have passively. My systems. <laughs> I'm looking through my things right now. Um Okay. Limited systems bonus means that you can use your core ability, your protocol, more than once, right? Yes, before having to do a full repair. That is so fucking sick. Full repair meaning like a the action you have to spend one of your repair, repair points. or you, yeah, have, to you have to go spend one of your repair points to do it. And how many Actually, repair I, I, points I, I, do you get on a mission? Uh, four. I oh my fuck! Wow! I need to start using my stuff more. <laughs> in, in fairness, usually, under most circumstances, the repair thing is only really used for repairing actual damage and restoring ammunition. And you only really need to restore ammo if you're using an ordnance weapon. And only two of us have ever had one. But Omni... That'd be me and... I have Black Thumb Protocol, you know. so I can just do that, you know? And have my mech yeah. continue going onward. Um, and that means I get my core systems back. 
which means that I'm not really too worried about running out of protocol. That's what you get for specking into all systems and engineering, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Pog. Pog, indeed. <laughs> Let's see here. Just double checking some things. Tell me what you guys want to do. Oh, man. Um. We. Uh, Rikert and Suki get, get back to work on the NHP. Hmm. What were you gonna name her? Uh, Lilith. Lilith. Cool. Lilith. I think that, uh, Gentry's not comfortable just leaving this place without, without being observed. And I don't think he's comfortable leaving it just a drone observation or orbital observation. That doesn't show us much. Unless we're literally parked permanently over this place and staring cameras at it. We're probably going to need some sort of on-site scout. Or on-site, re like, uh, recon. He's pretty good with long-range recon, long-range observation. So, I think he'll just hang out at extreme range and just observe the place, set up a camp out there, make sure nothing crazy happens before, between point A and point B. He's already done all the research he feels he can, and frankly, I think he needs a little R&R &R away from people to sort of recenter himself. And hanging out in the middle of a combat zone under a tarp, watching an anthill for an extraordinary distance, sounds like a pretty good way for him to chill. So That's fair. Yeah. Okay. The rest of you is? Um, I wanted to touch bases with Derek about what we were going to do with, um, with Lilith. I'm inscribing the litany of hate. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching her uh, nihilism in its truest axiomatic forms in a way that cannot be denied. And, uh, imparting upon her a uh, a true disdain for all things, you know? I see. That was okay. My plan. I will reiterate, I am terrified of this fucking plan. <laughs> That's your exact wording, got it. Okay, cool. We're rolling with it. Yikes. Except for, uh, you know, she uh, she still can't really act against me, though. That's the, uh, that's the kicker. Yeah, she, uh, so Suki's gonna let Rikerd write Lilith's program, like her Cascade program, and she is going to work on safety measures for Lilith. So right now I have multiple partitions, so like, can sort of like, multiple identities. Um, scheduled cycling, so after she cascades, she, she gets cycled immediately. Um, a manual kill switch to just shut the whole thing down if she starts acting strange or like out of her program and she is going to uh, commandeer Leon for a little bit to write a program for Leon to also have his own kill command protocol I trust he'll make yeah, that one uh, way. <laughs> yeah, back up kill switch to just completely terminate Lilith in the event that something something really goes to shit. Okay, that's going to take a full downtime, but you can start it. Okay. Yeah. That's what we have been doing, is we've been putting... I think we combined our downtimes last time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah we, we did. Okay. It's just if, flushing uh, out what we were actually doing. Right. Uh, and I believe that leaves Arkin. Arkin doesn't know what to do in this situation. Everyone else seems like they've got it, so she's just gonna catch up on some episodes of It's Never Sunny in Space Delphia. <laughs> You're not gonna take some space to gram pics? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Rolls. Right, so uh, speak Face talk a little bit. I'm growing ill from this. Uh, so, <laughs> you're not gonna watch Space in the City? <laughs> oh, that is actually one on my favorite. list. 
Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I stole that from you. That's okay. I have more. I have huh. not, not a lot more. Oh my god. <laughs> you just held up a fucking grocery list for eight people. <laughs> what in the fuck was that? <laughs> oh my. Well, folks, stick around if you want some more space puns. We got plenty <laughs> of them, evidently. <laughs> not even space puns, they're just... Space related. Some of them are good, others, you know... There's no other option than to just w mash the word space in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's a big word. Literally <laughs> anything else. <laughs> anyway, day goes, comes and goes. Uh, you're going to get information back from the charter. And they would say that they have identified by doing some subsurface scanning. Uh, they have identified a large... Newly constructed tunnel system. Looks pretty intricate. It looks like, uh, you guys ever have one of those, like, ant box things where there's, like, sand in it? Yeah. It's kind of what ant it looks farms. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ant farms. Uh, you mm -hmm. know that, what's the name of that? Uh, the Labyrinth? Mm -hmm. The uh, the Labyrinth of the, the German World War One bunker system? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what this thing not looks like. Not the one with David Bowie? No, not Dude, the one with David Bowie. The, the one, the <laughs> one with <laughs> Labyrinth. Yeah, that makes sense because it's a labyrinth, and you know. No, there's not cool, weird-looking goblins with big noses or anything like that. There's like, well, it, it's if like this. We're not meeting Space David Bowie. What are we even doing? David Bowie. Mm -hmm. we're, we're maintaining this stream above PG-13 because mm -hmm. we all know that from the waist down, that movie should have gone up a couple of ratings. So. Very true. This My man was back in. <laughs> this Spoblin King. <laughs> this Spoblin King. Most amazing movies. Welcome to Lance, everybody. Um, wow. Fuck. My new, um, okay, all, all goblins that survived being taken in my homebrew setting that were in space are called Spoblins. It's canon now. Nice. I feel like we've learned a lot about each other today. Um, anyway, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. Um, like I said, you guys have discovered this massive, there, there's a wide open entrance down into this just absolutely intricate series of tunnels and they're big enough for mechs to go through. That's the terrifying thing. They are, they have clearance. Uh, some of, some of you with taller mechs like Suki's, uh, you're going to have to duck a little bit, but these have like 20 to 30 feet wide open clearings for like massive things to move through them. And they're getting bigger though. every day. <laughs> Okay, we need to. They prepared for our coming here. No, I think they were going to do this either way. Um, okay, we need to locate the heart of this and stop the spread. Right? Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Sounds the very right. Least, we need to collapse the tunnel system before it can expand. Um, what do you think is? Get a collapse? selfie before we go in. <laughs> Of course, of course, oh. we're going to do that. Uh, <laughs> but but <laughs> how, spacey. we need to find out what it is that's actually creating this, right? And then like take that out, neutralize that in a way that's irreparable. These are space bugs, so they're going to be able to like reintegrate stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I think. So you could have her coffee mug again. To sitting down at their little conference table. I think instead of intentionally engaging in combat, I should say this with some pain. This should be a stealth mission. Like, she, like that was the intention, but that probably was absolutely not going to happen. <laughs> I. Um can do that. Red, while the, uh... Yeah. While Gentry's been down planet side, like, you know, literally, he's he's touched down miles away from this place. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's literally only, to look at it, he, he needs, like, camera equipment. He literally needs to get into his mech, to get in the scope, to see it at extreme range, and observe it, and, like, take notes. So he's been sure. probably camping there for however long this has taken for us to get this information since, like, the last conversation. Um, is there anything he could have seen on his own that might help us make this decision? 
to go on a stealth mission. I mean, that might, yeah, it might help us but with to that. determine the approach is what you're asking. Okay. Exactly. Um, would this I... is not going to be a stealth mission. Um, as soon as you go in there, it's you are going to just kick the. You're going to kick the nest, and it's going to be pretty tough. You're not sure how many of them there are. The, these tunnels are so long and elaborate that it would probably take actual months to go through every single facet of them. So that, that that's a good thing for one reason. It'll give you time to fall back and repair when you need to. But other than that, this is going to be a... It's going to be an attrition mission. The kind of task that's like, you can't just do it all in one go. You need to take breaks. Otherwise, your mechs are just going to fall to pieces. That's okay. Funny. So, uh, I figure then for, like, this conference call, he's probably still in, like, he's still in the area, like, on a dune somewhere, like, coming in through holographic cameras. So he's basically got the, uh, he's Obi-Wan calling the fucking, like, Jedi Council, coming in on, like, fuzzy screen, sitting there with, like, a cup of tea inside of a camping chair. Uh, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately, I don't think stealth is going to work. I've been watching this hive for a couple of days now, and from what I can tell, there is only one way in and one way out. And when we go in, they are very quickly going to know it's us. I mean, they were even able to identify drones in seconds, and from what I've seen, they, their movements would be pretty hostile. I think we're going to probably end up doing what you'd have to do with any bugs. Unfortunately, this is, uh, this is extermination. So, if you ever had to clear out termites from a house, it's a grind. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea for us to set up a forward operating base out here, though. Where I've been hanging out seems to be pretty quiet. Have a place to fall back to and repair, resupply. Wouldn't require us to get back to the starship, be able to move back and forth at speed. This is maybe like a 15 minute ride by flight, by like uh, engine. So. All right. All right, well, let's put that together. Bye. Get ready to deploy. Yeah, Excellent. suit up, kids. <laughs> okay. Right on, right on. I'll just throw us right into it, huh? Since you guys seem rearing to go. Yes. Well, we haven't been left with a lot of options. Even though we're trying to do everything in our power to avoid confrontation, we... Can't seem to do that. They're bugs. No. They're not dealing smart with, enough to avoid confrontation with. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're also dealing with bugs, and the longer you let bugs hang around, the larger their nest gets. The larger their nest gets, the more of them want to move out. Then they make more nests. It's an actual fucking parasite. So you need to kill them as fast as possible. These aren't like a... This isn't the kind of enemy that you can parlay with. <laughs> you already had that. <laughs> And you did a pretty okay, okay. job with that. <laughs> yeah. Had a feeling. Okay. What if we get a bunch of bug bombs and we throw them down the tunnel? Bug bombs. <laughs> yeah, can what? can I get like a super big can of raid? Yes. <laughs> a comically large can of raid. We'll get some big roach. Okay, trap. can we have <laughs> can we can we take a break so we can swap out our systems and stuff? I need to yeah. go to the bathroom really bad, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, no, let's take a break, because we're yeah. we're about an hour and a half in. We'll pick up with combat, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thank Sorry. you very much. Don't go anywhere, anybody. We're going to take a quick 5 to 10. We will be right back with more Desperado.
Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Thank you all so much for waiting patiently. Red, what's happening? Hey, uh, I just got the players ready for deployment. Uh, they can deploy anywhere behind these red lines in each of the corners, uh, however they please. I'm over here. Alrighty. In the top right. Okay. Already put myself where I want to be. Right on. Mm -hmm. And your drum. Yep. He's actually quite content hanging out back here. Uh, I, I think this is... Put myself in front. Okay. Is everybody satisfied with deployment? Yes. Indeed. Okay. So what you see as you look down into this massive uh, gaping hole in the ground is uh, it looks pretty covered up. It doesn't look like it leads anywhere, but you're sure a little bit of uh, forced excavation could reveal some things that you can't yet see with the eyes. Uh, other than that, there is a load of what appears to be scarab-like workers. I'll blow them up a little bit so you can see them a little bit better. Oh, interesting. Oh, cool. I like them. They are uh, they're working, but as soon as they hear you approaching, they drop. They, they well, they're not using tools. They're literally like manually excavating with like weird pincer-like maws, and uh, they look up and see you. And uh, from their arms, jut this massive like like rifle-like thing, and they all aim up. So uh, you guys get to go first, whatever order you like. Sick. Would May you? I? Go ahead, please. Get their attention, okay, homie. Cool. Um, let me see. Um. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um. Oh, I have a set of feet, not hexes. So, my bad. I was That's just exactly. like, oh my god, twenty-five hexes. <laughs> <laughs> um. There you go. That should be fixed. Ba -ba -ba. Where Damn, is my? Um, okay. Do, do, do. Um, god, all my stuff is like all over the place. Um, okay. So, what I'm gonna do is I changed out one of my things for uh, the rapid jump jet system dealing. Mm. Okay. And so I'm going to just fly down. That's and fine. so I'm going to I'm going to move boost, fly down and land here oh. in the middle of all these guys. Nice. And I'm going to use one of my systems, but it's new, so I have to read it for just a second um ba -ba -ba. it's a quick action okay fantastic um i'm gonna activate my interdiction field um this is a quick take action it creates a burst three field around me that lasts until deactivated uh i am slowed for the duration but hostile characters within the field are also slowed and only characters of my choice can teleport in and out so obviously that will be my allies okay and first, that will be my slowed. turn slowed means that they can only what does slowed entail again um let me pull up the status in my book. other than their speed is just lowered I've... Mm -hmm. I just want to take a moment to say, Red, there's a really good gaping hole in the ground. Thank you, man. I did a, I, you know, I, I put all my heart and soul into it. Honestly, spilled really my heart good. on the page for this one. It's Thank really you. good. I love, I love making massive gaping holes. It's kind of goatsy in a way, in a good way. Just <laughs> I just said that because you knew, I, I know you knew the reference. I pray for everybody in the audience that they don't know the reference that you're that. making. I should, that's what I should do, Derek. I should post it on Twitter with my hands like this. <laughs> yeah. That's a good that's idea. Um, ba -ba -ba. So what you doing? I'm looking up the slowed condition. I think it's just really annoying speed. because I can't. Maybe. 
slowed. Okay, finally. Um, the only movement slowed characters can make is their standard move. They can't boost or make any special moves granted by talent, systems, or weapons. So, no. It is not just half speed. And that's it? Okay. So, it's they just can't take any sort of special movement bonuses? Um, they can only move regularly. They cannot... Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, they on their right. And okay, nobody cool. can teleport in or out except for my allies. Okay. So, like, yeah. Suki drops down on these guys, and you hear this, like, really deep thrum. And you see, like, the dust um, within, like, half a mile around her just kind of slows down. That's fucking cool. Nice. Everything's just sort of like levitating. This this guy, uh, yeah. he pull he he uses one of his massive like sharp pincers and he tries to like pierce through. But it's like when you're having one of those nightmares where you're trying to fight back against somebody and you're like punching in slow motion. That's pretty much what happens to him. Uh, Shit! I totally forgot. Okay, fuck! I miss. I I I meant to activate my protocol. Is it too late? Yes, Oops. it is. <laughs> Damn it! I, mm. I got overexcited. Shit. Like, like I said, also keep in mind that this is going to be a multiple stage mission. If you use a protocol, it's not going to come back. Unless you have something that backs it up. True. True. I'll save it for You have I'll one save. SC, which is a system core. That's what allows you to use your protocols. If you use it, I'm not giving you another one unless you have another one from a from like. Yeah, whatever. but you can also use Perfect. you can also use reserves for protocol. Yeah, you can pull protocol. a fast one on me and say that you have an extra reserve, but this mission's going to be long, and I'm giving you a fair warning, and I've given you multiple fair warnings. Okay, so. okay, I've, I've heard your, I've heard your warnings. I will take them. Okay. I will not use my protocol. Okay, one of them attempts to stab and completely fails, like I described, and uh, I'm going to toss it over to the players, whoever wants to go next. Do you mind? It's up to you. Go. Okay, um, so I am going to activate my protocol. Um, it is, if I'm not mistaken, um, kind of just up to me to describe that. So uh, kind of instinctively, um, I would say Riker like meshed with the suit. We can kind of like see the, uh, the silhouette of it and like his body over it. Uh, he says, uh, activate Aurora protocol. And at this point, the mech just like stepping forward becomes invisible and then teleports right down on here next by this guy. Um, good. Now, if I make a skirmish, does that mean if something is in my main and ox mount, I can use both? Skirmish, should you choose, you, skirmish you choose one. You choose Barrage one. would be you choose two. So. Oh, so if you have three, you still don't get to use all three? No. Not, no, not with barrage. Barrages you choose to. And so okay. barrage is also a full action. Skirmish is a half. So. Okay. In that case, just to be safe, uh, you don't have to have the same target, right? If you barrage. Oh no! Absolutely not. Sick. Uh, then I am going to go ahead and toggle uh, switch to barrage. Uh, I'm going to make my first attack roll against this guy. Was your teleport thing, was that not a quick action, or is that literally just a part of your movement? Activating my protocol for the rest of the scene, you teleport when you boost or make a standard move. Okay, yeah, your standard moves literally just teleport now. Okay, yeah, sure. Got it. Yeah. Um, nice. So that is going to be a total of 12. 12 to hit. That'll be... I'm also invisible, and this is an accurate weapon, so... Plus 6 oh. is 15, uh, so 17... Um, or, I'm sorry, uh, 18, and then accurate, uh, and visibility, does that give me an additional accuracy so it doesn't matter, I won't waste you, time you roll a six. six. Yeah, yeah, you rolled the highest there is. Uh, you're gonna hit, go ahead, roll the damage for me. Okay, so it's an, it's just three damage with the variable sword, plus an additional six because he doesn't have anybody next to him. Oof, that sucks. That's, uh, So you're dealing damage. how much? No. Four damage with the variable sword. All right, describe that to me. Um, yeah, I just teleport next to him, and then, like, with my blade, uh, kind of, like, in a kneeling position, I'm literally just teleporting with my blade inside of him. Uh, and then, right. if he's not down, I'm going to uh, turn around and hit him with my fold knife. 
He's done. Oh shit. Okay. Um, then in that case, let's see. I'm letting you guys play with your toys this session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you move around. Move. How much movement do you have, Derek? Out of curiosity. Five. Okay, so you so you moved two, I believe. Okay, so then um, I'm going to um, over. I can still boost. No, I cannot boost. Yeah. You you chose a. Barrage, so what what, right? what would happen is you, yeah, you chose a barrage. So you're gonna make two attacks, or mm. you, I'll let you say it was a skirmish, if you'd like. Mm, I mm, mm. no. Nah, you can skirmish and then move and then skirmish again. I can skirmish and move and then skirmish again with an overcharge. Holy shit! Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then in that you case, can um you can move down here and they'd be in range. Yeah, uh, I was trying to get this guy over here, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach him. Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a bit of a stretch. In that case, you I can will... definitely get this gun. Uh, how far up is it, am I from here? One. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, I'll say that's like a hex or so in height. So it's not gonna be like I'm not gonna penalty it from your movement. If you wanted to like drop down on top of them and do something sick and cool, I'll give you extra damage. Um, I was actually going to just use my variable sword because it has a range of two. As a oh, shit, you're just gonna reach down and poke him just like full on yeah. <laughs> lunge. That's cool. Okay, yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll for me. Um, that is going to be uh, another. Let's see if I can get uh, another good roll on that. Uh, so that is gonna be a total of 7 plus 11 is 18 again. Okay, you wanna describe that one to me as well? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, teleport forward, and again, the sword is just like sticking out through, I'm gonna assume it's head. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, unless three damage doesn't kill it, in which case. No, it does. Oh, then yeah, um, through its head. Uh, and then so, just kind of teleport back again. Gotcha. So, one thing you've noticed about these things, they're a little bit uncanny in the way that they fall. They don't like spark and explode like mechs do, they crumple like mortals do, like regular humans do. If you like. If you were to kill a human, they don't like fling their arms out all cowboy style. They literally just crumple and fall. That's what these guys are doing. So they're very uncanny to watch. And you notice that their arms and legs like fold up like insects. Like when you kill a spider and its legs all fold in on itself. That's kind of how these guys are going down. Damn. So I took one heat there, right? For uh, skirmishing twice? Uh, yeah. Because I used my movement and then I skirmished. Or I I used part of my movement, and then I skirmished, and then I used the rest of my movement, and then I skirmished again. So is that... Yes. Okay. So... You skirmished twice, so that'll be a heat, yeah, because you overheated to do that. A skirmish is a quick action. Yeah, it's a half action, so... And then you did another... And you can't take the same action twice in a turn unless you overheat. Unless so. you overheat, so I still have a half action? Technically speaking, yes. So you could boost with that if you wanted to teleport somewhere. Yeah, uh, I am going to use um, Stalk Prey. Uh, you infect the target with a viral logic that wipes your mind from their sensors. They treat you as invincible, invisible until you take damage from them. This can only affect one target at a time. I'm going to be doing this guy that's... Uh, well, he probably can't see me from where he is. So I'm going to do it to this guy over here who might be able to see me. Um, yeah, I did. So I need to make a uh, tech attack against him. Is that right? It's an invade? Yeah, that would What's be a tech attack. What's um, yeah, what is your sensor range? My sensor range is 15. Yep, you are definitely in oh, range for that. Nice. Wow, that's a big ass sensor range. <laughs> I've put Holy everything shit. into systems and engineering, you guys. That's smart. That is smart for an SSC friend. Yeah, that's going to be a 17. Yeah, no, you invade. Uh, he does not even know you're there. You like you, one minute you're there, next minute you just you're a blur. You're literally just like a spot in his vision. Yep, sick. That's my turn. Okay, cool. Uh, one of these little dudes is gonna like uh, use his pincer, and he's actually gonna manage to stab you. Suki's gonna hit you for six. I don't believe you have any armor. Nope, no armor. Okay, you're gonna take six damage from a pokey, and then I'll throw it back to the players. <laughs> On the you are muted. <laughs> he did it again. Oh, uh, have you been talking this whole time and we haven't heard you, buddy? I think so. 
Oh man, I'm sorry. Now I feel bad. <laughs> now you probably sorry. felt that we were just being dicks. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> you guys were being fine. I was just like, the funny thing is, I think back and nothing I said needed to be heard, which is actually a different kind of impression. <laughs> so uh, I what I was saying was, Natalie, anyway. if you, do you want to go um, next? <laughs> Top of the round. I'm just going to do this before I forget. Um, Omni doesn't have to go next, but. Suki, I'm gonna have her issue a command to Arbalist and tell him take care of this group over here. Got it. And um, uh, I'm gonna use my um, what's it called? Disturb. My thing of Your God, what is it called? Um, my lesson of the held image to Oops. make a lock on on this guy right here. Make it easier on Arbalest. Okay. Nice, nice. So, which one's the one with the lock on? The, uh, this one? There yeah, we go. One. Okay, that's what I thought. You locked onto that one? Okay, let me put up a target. Perfect. Log on. So you have a lock on, and you have a, uh... An accuracy? Um, leadership. Yeah, you have a leadership die for accuracy. Oh, and man. you don't have to use your leadership die for accuracy, you can use it for damage. Ooh, it's probably what we're gonna be doing, because I have accuracy anyway, base, so that's sick. You might as well go next to take advantage of all that stuff. You know, they are all hanging out in a very nice, neat little clump. Sure. Uh, if you're alright with that, Natalie, then uh, alright. All right. You're my favorite little clump. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Thank you. You, make me, you know how to make a boy feel special. Um... <laughs> So he's go. So uh, Gentry is uh, this whole time been sort of like just has. I think I imagine he approached this by just like what he usually does, glide across the sand. And as soon as he got onto the battlefield, he sort of skids to a stop, and off his back, Helpy detaches and immediately begins like doing his little wavy dance, charging his arms up and Helpy. ready to recharge. Me. Um, as yeah, I uh, I stand as uh, I, I stand Helpy. Helpy's a good boy. Um, as, uh, Gentry slowly turns his metal gaze down into the pit, sees a couple of targets on his sonar, sees you ping it, and just immediately goes, Right, getting to work. Leans back in the cockpit, eyes closed, the MRI machine activates, and the next thing he knows, he's this giant celestial figure staring over the battlefield. Just gently charts with a single finger point from one point to the other, and you guys hear an almighty bang. And let's see what we get. So this is the indirect fire of the bow Euphrates. Well, bam! Uh, da, 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 da. Nice. So that's pretty good. Uh, that does have accuracy as well. So um, how does the accuracy work again? It's a d6. Uh, you rolled a six on the accuracy, so don't even bother rolling again because you got the highest possible result. Um, Oh, I got the highest possible result? On your accuracy, yes. On your accuracy, yeah. not the no, D20. Not my base style, so the D20 like... rule. You got an 8 yes, on yes. the D20 rule. Okay, perfect. So yeah, that's the case then. Uh, that's uh, that's against this guy. So everyone else would be within radius of him as they are all within... Yeah, they're all within two. So and, Yeah, and I'm yeah, not going to have you individually roll. I'll just clump that. All right, cool. Uh, they all take a... Oh, that's right. I do have the uh, die. I do have the leadership die. I'll use it, actually, if I can. Um, yep. To add a leadership die to the damage on our friend up here. That's um, a D6, I believe. Yep. Ooh. Nice. That's 10 damage on that guy. Beep. Boop. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you hear an almighty bang. There's a bright flash of light so intense that everything seems like it's night for a second. And then, by the time you guys turn your scanners over to see it, the area is little more than a glass crater, and the glass is, like, scintillating with color, almost like it's deciding to stop bubbling. And you can see Arbalest slowly stretch, and the back of his cannon just, like, opens and vents out a jet of bright prismatic light as Helpy immediately goes and begins pulling out the expended core, dropping it on the sand, and putting a new one in. So with my minor action, I'm going to be doing that. And that's right gonna be it. Cool, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you oh, guys are. I... 
I keep you forgetting forget? about my scouring form. The, the, that guy who attacked me took two damage. Oh, well, in that case, uh... He's oh, gone. Nice. Uh... <laughs> 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 okay, um, let's see. You guys are absolutely wiping the floor, so I'm gonna up the ante a little bit. There you go. Oh, uh, let's see. Mama! Mama. <laughs> you, yeah, you see this... You see a burrowing out of the ground from supposedly what you'd expect to be a tunnel, just like these massive, like, clawing hands, just like digging dirt and just like raising itself up. You ever seen like a, you ever seen like a snake, like wiggle itself around until it like gets underneath the sand? It's like the opposite of what this thing is doing. It's like wriggling itself up and above the earth. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. I think it's still in. <laughs> Target lock players, right on. Uh, let's see. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay. This is a hive. Uh, you guys have encountered one of these before. This one's kind of tiny, uh, but uh, look, uh, size can be deceiving, as you've often found out. Uh, so it is going to deploy a Razor Swarm in a free area within sensor range, and its sensor range is very high. I believe. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm, yeah, we'll do it right here. Boop. Thanks. You're welcome. See ya. Okay. Let's see. Ally characters gains. Blah, 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 blah. Hostile characters that start their turn, at least partially within the area, move into it. Oh, uh, hostiles, actually. So I can actually put it right here and give them cover. Um, so you're going to take four burn when you start your turn there. And that'll yeah. be a... That's a quick action? Fuck. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll do another one. Um, within sensors. Burn. Huh? Burn. Yes, burn. Okay. Uh, you're in sensors, right? Yes, you are. Burn is so mm. rough. Oh, All right, no. Derek. What's your your a ten in E defense? My E defense is ten. Okay. Let's see what she rolls. High enough. I'll let you choose: immobilized or impaired. Um, let me see here. What impaired you means you, you take a d6 penalty to everything. Immobilized means you cannot move. Um, I don't. Hmm. I think I would probably benefit more from taking impaired because I can, I can do stuff about that. Um. Yeah. Um, moving. Would probably shut down my teleportation, but I can black thumb to get rid of that while I have uh, Leon take over um, the mech. So I'm fine with taking impaired. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Trying to find the impaired rules. Actually, immo immobilized, I believe, is literally just. Yeah, you cannot make any voluntary movement, and impaired just means you receive a d6 penalty to all of your rolls until the start of next turn. Uh, let me double check and make sure that is the only thing that does. They immediately move up to five spaces in the direction chosen by the hive. You're going to go falling. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. You're going to go falling down a good amount, so I'm going to roll some dice and see how much damage you take from falling. Oh no! Oh no! Taking a fucking tumble. Oh, I f oh, I think I, I, f I forgot to include that I have personalization as well, so I don't have thirteen hit points. I have fifteen. Oh, okay, we can add that in. Nice. You're gonna need that because I just rolled almost max damage on that. Uh, so let's see. Oh, no. I rolled eleven. <gasps> Ow! Did that Ooh. hurt. So yeah, you you just see like. So, Riker, you, like, lose control of your mech for a moment as, like, as you're trying to, like, move around and, like, take control of it. Like, you just start, like, twisting unnaturally and very uncomfortably. You just, like, basically just get flung like a pot, like a marionette that's just been discarded. Uh, like and a marionette doll has been discarded by the master. You can teleport back up. <laughs> Exposed singularity once around as a reaction. When your mech takes damage, you and me immediately teleport to a free space within 1d6 spaces. Uh, I'm just going to immediately teleport back on up there. This motherfucker lagging. He's literally just like fucking <laughs> <laughs> lagging all over the place. He's just like running in place. Gets like teleports to the bottom, takes a shit ton of fall damage, teleports back up. He's like running into the wall like this. <laughs> yeah. It's like a um, cod lobby all over again. Oh wait, that would be back into the mist, right? So I don't want to go there. Um, so instead, I was right here. Yeah, I was right here. Um, yeah, right six there. spaces. Um, how high down? How far down am I? One. 
Well, uh, you're, you're down from here three. From the from the ground up here. Oh, uh, that would be four. So I'm four down, and I'm two. So this would be one, and then two, and then three, four. So I'm right there, so that would be one, two, three, four. Okay, so I can move six spaces. Um, I cannot reach that. In that case, I would go... Um... <laughs> I just fucking love the image of you getting flung off the edge and just teleporting back like there's like an out of bounds thing that you just touched and so you just teleported back to the safe area, like borderland. <laughs> <laughs> Iberian, thank you. Yeah, I teleport over there instead. Sounds good, boss. Okay, uh, that is it for my turn. Uh, I believe that leaves Natalie. Oh shit, sorry, I forgot thank how to deal. You move over to the edge. <laughs> I don't think I can get down there. I only have four movement. Uh, you uh, could voluntarily fall, which would make you prone. Um, oh, land I on have him. For that. <laughs> What's up? I have something for prone. Derek, you're also technically prone, even though you teleported. <laughs> I oh, gain yeah. plus one accuracy on saves to avoid prone or knockback. Does that help me at all? I think if you fall, you're just prone. I don't think there's a save for it. Um, if you <laughs> have uh, you have the rapid burst jump system, you could always boost and you would fly down. You wouldn't fall. Uh, okay, so a successful hole or agility check might be required to climb down a particularly well, can I difficult still surface. Shoot if I'm prone. Uh, you can yeah, you can still attack when you're prone. You're, you're just, people are just gonna have a plus one accuracy to hit you. That's fine. Um, so you just go tumbling down the side like fucking Leahy falling out of the trailer, and you're just like still shooting. It's just like uh, I can't think what movie it's from, but there's some scene from a movie where so it's just a ridiculously long amount of time of this person rolling down a hill. Hot like, Rod. Natalie, can you? It's going to end. There's just more hill that they keep it's hot down. Run. What? It's hot. I had run. a dream like that the other night. Hot so, run. Natalie, oh, can yeah. you roll a can you roll a d20 and add your grit, which would be three, I believe. Okay. <laughs> you want to roll two d6 for me? Okay. So, how much damage I'm taking? No, you just landed on top of one of my invisible creatures. Oh, nice. <laughs> Dude, you, you accidentally death from above? That's the best. Yeah, you literally just landed on top of one of the invisible things that I have. This little fucker. And, uh, you're gonna do seven damage, too. Fantastic. Damn. Also, he gets knocked out of the way and he's prone. Crunch. Yeah, you meant to do that. <laughs> I, I knew they were there. That was my plan. Oh. <laughs> you were the, yeah, the whole time. Absolutely. <laughs> Never any doubt. I, I was studying the, the wind and the dust moving, <laughs> and I noticed that it wasn't, like, hitting this one area. I did not mean for you to find out that I was having invisible things that way, but honestly, that's so fucking funny, because I was just like, what happened to my fucking thing that I put right there? I'm like, oh my god, Natalie landed mm -hmm. right on fucking top. I love that Arkin is the one who just accidentally is like, I think I just landed on something invisible. Like, just says that onto the comms. It's like that scene from Spongebob where, like, Spongebob accidentally steps on Plankton, he's, like, trying to scrape him off of his foot, and he's just screaming in agony, just, YES! <laughs> <laughs> something weird on my shoe. <laughs> yeah, scream. Landed on something hard and invisible. <laughs> so you 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 were right here, and you have how much movement? Four. Oh yeah, no, you could you could have just climbed down. That's fine. You don't oh, have to be prone. Well, now I like tumbling down and falling on that guy. Instead. That's fine. I'm not gonna make you take damage for that one. <laughs> That's just funny as fuck. What? Thank you, Timo <laughs> and Bob, for the bonuses. Oscar footing. Nice. Nice. Red, you get and... one too. Oh, lucky me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now I'm going to shoot the guy in front of me with my plasma thrower. You can hit both of them. <laughs> you can, like, you got a, well, you got a nine cone on that, I believe. A seven. Seven cone, so that'll be pretty much, and I'm like... Uh, that's not exactly straight, but you get the idea. Nah, no, you can. You can Rickon's just gonna it. like casually light up the entire side of the. <laughs> Set the anthill on fire. 
No, I just like to imagine that fucking uh, Omni's like uh, just sitting up there, just like you just see this massive thing of fire just like light up <laughs> just, like, right underneath. <laughs> it's yeah, like, no, my, my visor automatically polarizes. Like, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Go ahead and roll the hit. Um, is that a D twenty? Yeah, that'll be a D twenty plus your grip. So that'll be seventeen. And then add an accuracy for hitting this guy because he's pro. Um, D six or D four? D six, yeah, D six. Okay, so that'll be seventeen, nineteen. Okay, you're gonna hit both of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll damage. It's a lot of fucking damage. <laughs> D six plus two. It looks like. Yeah, D six plus two, and then it's six burn. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing a minimum of eight. <laughs> So that'll be 12 damage total. And uh, <laughs> using the flamethrower, I think you take two heat. Okay. I think I'm immune to heat, aren't I? Or something like that, where is You're it? immune to burn. No, no, burn. You, you, yeah, is. you're immune to burn. You want heat because that's another like danger zone mech. Heat, good. You want to get to six yeah, heat you because could. you do another D6 of damage whenever you get to the danger zone. It's pretty, pretty tasty. Uh, so how do you want to just melt these fools? Like you literally just like <laughs> turn them into nothing but like pulp on the ground. Like they're molten slag. I imagine she like goes to try and climb down the mountainside, loses her footing, tumbles down, kind of stumbles around, sits up, like fumbling around with her gun, accidentally sets it off and just like <laughs> down that whole area. Select, uh, do you want to select some spaces for the, uh, for the plasma afterburn, because that is something you can do. Oh, um, Just wherever you fire the flamethrower at, that's what we're all like, it is. It's like general area. It's just okay. completely scorched. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll put one here. Mm -hmm. And one, I can't tell my hexes. One here. When yeah. people pass through those on their turn, they're going to take a d6 of energy damage. I don't know how to delete this. The circle? Oh, uh, I got it. Okay. Does it leave three? I think it leaves three, actually. It does leave three. I'm just stupid. Uh, we'll put one right here for safe measure. That means that if anybody even comes remotely close to this area, they will just actually die. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that stopped being a thick circle, but well, that's fine. Uh, Extra thick! Thick. Okay. Is that if you're turning, you're just gonna fucking melt some fools and then just be like, oh, I meant to do all of that. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah that, that, that was what I meant to do. That, that was one of the bad guys I just melted, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's hope so. Derek. Yeah. You teleported into a spot where I have one of my assassins. Uh, so let's see here. We're playing Battleship now, boys. Uh, <laughs> like Minesweeper? See. Yeah. <laughs> Where did Red hide the assassins? <laughs> Why does Red hate me? All these questions and more. Uh, let's see. So it'll be an assassin's mark. So he'll use a quick action to choose a character in line of sight. For the rest of the scene, I have resistance to your damage. Okay. Damage de dealt to you cannot be reduced. Okay. And he, uh, he also gains a plus one bonus uh, to all saves forced by the target. Okay. So he's going to poke the shit out of you okay. um, with a heated blade, which does double damage to prone, shredded, immobilized, or stunned targets. Oh, no. Oh, damn. So let's see if he hits. This also has plus two accuracy. There's not a... How much damage did I take actually. earlier, by the way? 11. 11. Okay. 11. You have 4 HP. Yep. 4, man. 4 old man came right in, buddy. Uh, either blade. Okay, so that'll be a plus two. Plus 2d6. And your evasion is 12? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he just barely hits. Uh, so let's see. That's gonna deal you... 10. <laughs> Oof! So you're gonna, uh, you're gonna structure, so go ahead and roll a d6. No, I'm one. not! Was that oh my Dang. god, the paint job. Oh, the paint bad. job. Can't have shit, Lancer! <laughs> Can't have shit. 
<laughs> you you better get your ass over to the tank, sir. Oof, that hurt. Uh, every day. <laughs> the guy next to me can't see me either because I invaded him last round. Oh my! <laughs> That's actually flipping hilarious. <laughs> I hate everything. Uh, let's see. So, at least you took six Rig damage earlier. Oh, no, I didn't because he died. Before when attempting no, the attack or after the attack? It's the start of his turn. Oh, so you didn't take any damage. Yeah, that's why I fixed my health. Y'all gotta remind me of your effects. I can't remember all this stuff. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, this is why so... it's nice to have I can't, a nice artillery. I can't remember, I can't remember my own Ooh. stuff, so... Nice far enough away here. I can't believe I got that scratch right, paint right there. Oh, Jesus Christ. That, that's so... You know, you deserve that. After, after <laughs> I, I've been kind of bullying you guys, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so let's... <laughs> I had to pick the hardest mech to start with, you know? <laughs> Jerry, Riker, do you hear your comm clack, or click on and suck you be on the other end? If you die, it's not my fault. I'm not oh, dying so today. Uh, okay. Get the fuck over here. Okay, 20... Less... Two. Okay, uh, let's see. So, Suki, you're going to take eight. Wait, actually, does that even hit? That does not hit, never mind. Uh, let's see. I don't know how he managed to miss. You literally have six evasion. Uh... Oof. On the other <laughs> hand, um... Oh, you're still gonna take three because of reliable, because it's an assault weapon. Um... That's fine. And... Leviathan, you're gonna take... Eight minus your armor, and I give a one on the Jangus. So that'll be seven damage. It's my armor. Where do I see my armor? No, I have a three. You have a three in armor. That's what it says on here. Did you Jengus. take a core bonus that increased your armor? I think so. Oh my! I can't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have shit. <laughs> okay, you take five. Damn it. I did the same thing though when I was playing Jenkins. I wanted to be armor and quick. Uh, okay, well, top of the round. Can I get the fuck out of here? Are we okay with that? Are we okay yeah, with Derek getting the fuck oh, out of here? No, I'd, I'd like you to stay there a little longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, your paint job is destroyed, so that's not yeah, happening again. Yeah, that's not happening again. Yeah. Okay. Um. So these guys next to me never took a turn, so they're just gonna go zap with my scouring swarm. Oh yeah, they did technically. They did technically take a turn, but I forgot to count for their account for this your swarm going off. So they went oh. squish. I'm just deleting them. Now you have to face the Pepto Bismol collab. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Strangely, you don't feel nauseous. I'm gonna replace all the blood in my system with Pepto Bismol. Anyway, who's going first? Um, I would be happy Derek. to go first so I can Derek get is. out of this shitty situation. Sure. When you teleport, I'm gonna let you stand pro, uh, from prone because I believe that's something you can do. I can also fly, so I could just yeah, fly up fine. one and then teleport the rest. Um, Easy peasy. So in that case, I'm going to first of all kill this fucker for having the gall to attack me. He has resistance all your I can hit him twice and still get the fuck out of the situation. Yes, you can. Okay. All See right. what you can do, boss man. So that is going to be, um, I do have a minus D6, but I have an accurate weapon, so that's just going to cancel each other out at, uh, 14. Okay, would you like to add any bonuses to that? Um, I have some from chat. Let's see. Enemies yes, typically do. don't have a high AC and Lancer. Is there any other things that he procced onto me? Uh, let me reread. So, uh, he has resistance to your damage. Mm -hmm. uh, when he deals damage to you, it cannot be reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, some people might say that the paint thing is technically a reduction of damage. I say it's a prevention of damage, so shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah. Also, it's cool, so I'm going to let it slide. And uh, he, you also, um, he also has a bonus to save when you force him to make a save. So he has a D6 bonus. That's it. That's all. That's all he has against you. Okay. Um, so mostly I'm, resistance to damage is what you're worried about. Okay, I'm at a 14. Mm -hmm. I think a 14 will hit this guy. Does a 14 hit this guy? <coughs> nope. Damn it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take another heat to skirmish again. Or you could just barrage. I need a quick action. 
That's fair. <clears throat> That'll be a... Uh, that will hit. Um, add a, roll a d3 and we'll add that to your heat. Okie dokie. Two. Ooh. That's a... Yeah. Not yeah, three of eight. Okay. That's, that's not that bad. You're not sure. even at the danger zone yet. Um, He's going to take okay. seven damage. And then resisting. Half. So he's going to take half of that. So it'll be rounded up, I believe, in Lancer. Uh, so that'll be four. So it'll take four. Okay. Um, and then as a quick action, I'm going to become intangible and uh, get the fuck out of dodge. Let's see how far can I move um, at this stage. I'm going to assume that uh, moving up here is uh, within five if I'm teleporting. Um, yeah, that's fine. And I am intangible currently. Which means you're invisible? Yes. So, Fade Cloak. Um, when activated, you immediately phase out of real space, becoming intangible. While intangible, you may move through obstructions, but not in your turn within them. You cannot interact with any other object or character or be interacted with in any way, uh, e.g. taking or dealing damage. Uh, roll 1d6 at the start of each of your turns. On three or less, you return to real space until the start of your next turn. On a four up, you remain intangible. This system remains active for the rest of the scene or until you deactivate it as a quick action. Nice. I didn't realize that uh, Morning Cloak had the intangible feature. That's interesting. <clears throat> it's a okay, system cool. that I had to take. So you're literally just, uh, I guess the best way to think about that is phased and magic the gathering if you ever played magic uh literally what phasing is cannot be interacted with and it cannot interact yet. okay um that'll be your turn and i'll throw it My over to the enemy take fucking forever sorry guys <laughs> no you're fine you got a lot of cool toys everybody's turn's gonna take a while everybody's got a bunch of toys now um here is that rick of ray music out here <laughs> mm, <maybe. laughs> i Not love quite. rick of ray let's see so, uh, you guys sort of see, like, this... Everything grows dark for a second as, like, light seems to be sucked into this one, like, point. There's, like, a sliver of this, like, silvery, platinum, slightly pinkish light before just... And something appears. What the fuck is that? I'll blow it up for you so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, if I can do that. Oh, no. Oh, I don't no. like that. Oh, oh no. no. That's a witch. Not just any witch. It's a special witch. Oh god, that's a black witch. <laughs> okay, so this thing's appearing. Uh, you, you see, like, all of what, what's remains of the scarabs in this thing. Like, you see their, like, little wings or, like, parts of their exoskeleton, like, flutter a little bit. Like, they're just, like, mm -hmm. either some sort of interaction with the fact that this thing was summoned. Uh, and now it's going to wreak havoc because you guys are doing too good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, okay, so trying to find the ah, uh, there we go. Okay, uh, Suki, what's your E defense? Fourteen. Yep. Yeah, let's Red. See how this goes. <clears throat> I would have hit on that yeah. first attack. I had invisibility. I start with invisibility, so I still get to roll a d6. And I'm going to assume that uh, his armor class is 15, so or at least 16. That's fine. Yeah, you can retroactively. That's fine. That's three more damage. Cut that in half. It's two rounded up. Sorry, Elise. I just remembered. Oh, good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> You're not getting lucky today, Elise. You're going to have pain transference. So. On a success, anytime the target gains heat until the end of the witch's next turn, all of their allied characters within five also gain the same amount of heat. That's not a good. We've had that one before. Yes, we have. Nah, Ami's That's not good in range. That's for Natalie, though. <laughs> you you, you <laughs> think? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use tear down. I'm gonna make another tech attack against you. So all of your heat vents on your mech, Suki, just close and you start like emanating this oh, like wave of heat and let me roll here and that'll be a d6 bonus does it again uh you are going to take three heat immediately um 
Oh no. So that'll put you up to three odd five. That means Natalie's gonna also take three heat immediately and go to five out of 12. And at the start of your turn, you're gonna take even more heat. I'm not gonna tell you how much heat you're taking, but you will be taking a lot. Good heat. thing I'm you're in a changes. This thing is not... flying, by the way. So yeah, oh, yeah, right, 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 right. I'm not in a jingus. Sorry, you're right. You're not. Mm. This thing's flying, by the way. So just consider it as being like level with the top of the uh, the edge. I'll just put oh, a good to know. thing on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Who's taking their turn next? So Hello. who's gone? Natalie. I think Natalie should go because that looks like a really nice little lineup to just get those guys in a flame cone right there. That'd actually be better to do it than a. Yeah, well. I'm prone, so. No, you're not prone. You're I'm not. not prone. In, yeah, you landed on top of somebody. I'm going to get slid. That was funny. <laughs> that, was, that was too funny. I could, I could, I had to like. <laughs> I can move four, so it's like. No, you have range. You can shoot in a 10 line or a 7 cone, so you have range. Then let's shoot him. Wherever I need to stand. Okay, so as soon as you use the flamethrower to attack, it puts you into the danger zone. So that means that you're going to have nuclear cavalier procs. Yeah! So that that is going to be a hit on the hive. And now roll for the witch as well. That's extra damage, right? I use my accuracy. Yeah, that's fine. So you're currently at a nine. Do you, so... Is your weapon accurate or anything? No, the okay. the, the thermal bear, or the the uh, plasma thrower is not accurate. What do I roll for accuracy? Mm -hmm. Six. D six. Six, six. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You got, you got what you needed. Let's see. Uh, let's see damage. So remember, you have nuclear cavalier here. So whatever procs you get from that, that's gonna. Don't you get extra damage from nuclear cavalier? Yes. Let's see. Where is that? It's in your um, narrative profile. Uh, no, it'll be under tactical. Tactical yes, profile. Tactical. Okay, let me pull it up real quick. Let me pull up my flamethrower, dude, so I can help you out here. Dude, this game is so fucking cool, man. Holy shit. I know, right? Nuclear Cavalier, so the first attack you make uh, while in the danger zone, you deal two additional heat. And you deal an additional D6 uh, bonus energy damage. So, instead of 1D6, you're dealing 2D6 plus 2, and then 6 part. <laughs> 2D6 plus 2. Oh, yeah. So eight, that's 10, ten? and 16 total. 16. Not bad. To each of them. Yep, and they're each taking six burn. So let me see what witch has for health points. So that's okay. Do that. Witch have any armor? No, she does not. Okay, I believe the hive does have armor. Yes, it does. It has one. So you're dealing sixteen. <clears throat> so it's gonna take fifteen instead. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh boohoo! It's taking fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. Not too worried about that. Can she attack again? Uh, well, no, because that's a super heavy. Um, oh, okay, okay. She can't burst she also to do again for more heat? Um, I guess she technically skirmished. I think you have to use a barrage to use the flamethrower that uh, it's a super probably. heavy. I'm uh, just asking because so, yeah. I don't know. This game is still a little bit... Let me take a look. Learning. I don't think that actually... I don't think it uh, matters whether it's super heavy or not. Let me take a look. If it's super heavy, you can't. Uh, you can't. Or shoot a single it super heavy weapon. You're right. Yeah, it requires a barrage. Yeah. Okay. I figured as much. So yeah, that's that's both of your actions. Unless you wanted to overheat, which would be uh, one heat to you right now. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm assuming you want to put all your burn patches. Like the burn patches can't hit the witch because she's in the air, but uh, you can. Just put him down like all around this poor little fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I guess like. Well, you said we're gonna have more to come later, so probably don't want to go to do overboard yet. So, you you did a, you, you just did thirty two damage. So. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
Did I'm living vicariously like through Natalie game. right now, okay? Mm. I miss playing a Jengus. Like, I love playing a Jengus. That's fair. <laughs> fun so far? <laughs> it's just, you deal so much damage, and there's n nothing can stop you. Nothing. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Myself. <laughs> Except for myself. <laughs> so you Only my incompetence can stop me. This, uh, this witch catches a flame, and, uh, it, like, looks at you, Natalie, and, like, your systems get, like, you see, like, all of your, like, monitors and stuff like that, they, like, boo, they ripple with this pink thing for a moment, before it just goes, shloop, and it disappears. Seemed to have scared it off, for now. Whatever it is. But, moving over to the enemies, I gotta bully Omni a little bit, I can't have him. Having too much fun over here in the corner. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. <laughs> so if, Assassin if overcharging time. doesn't have to be one that you've already made, it says even one you already made this turn. Yeah, no, it can be anything. It just, Interesting. I, I was just I saying. I didn't that. understand that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Got um, a little mimbly pimbly boy here. It's basically just like pay a penalty to do extra stuff on your turn. Okay, so he's going to Assassin's heat. Mark. Yeah. Um. So here's what he's gonna do. Actually, he might not assassin's mark. Thinking, I'm thinking. No, this is much funnier. I'm gonna fuck you up. Oh, let's see here. Uh, D20 plus two plus two D six. He's gonna hit. Uh, so you're gonna take. Don't forget, I do have soft cover from integrated chaff launchers because I haven't moved yet. Oh yeah, you, you're still gonna get hit though. Uh, so you're gonna yeah. take. How much? You, do you have any armor? Uh, no, I don't. You're gonna take five. Uh, which isn't that bad. That's okay. when you see this this thing like stabs you and it's just like, oh okay, that didn't hurt that bad. That could have been worse. And then it like it like bends over and you see this massive like nasty flesh like like tube just come out of its back and it like widens like a spread, like a choke on a shotgun and it's gonna blast you with it. Uh oh, so let's see here. That's, this is called the Devil's Cough Shotgun. Uh <laughs> Nice. Let's see. let's see if this hits. Your evasion is ten, right? Uh, I have soft cover. Oh, okay. Fuck well, you. Okay. Did he Let's move? See. Oh, he, wait, he, fought, he missed? No, he, he might miss. Okay, who wants okay. to roll the d6? Because th th this is going to be big if he miss, if he hits. I'm going to roll it. Yeah, don't, don't, that's don't, only don't, fair. don't tie this to my luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave me a shot. Four. Ah, he misses. Nice. Yes! Five. And you know what happens when he misses, Red? What? <laughs> The second that he misses, uh, so Arbos gets sort of shanked, looks as this thing like brings the cannon up, and immediately he just sort of seems to wave dash out of the way. Like he's there, and then one minute he just sort of like moves, leaving behind like a, a little multicolor like wave behind him in the shape of his body. And sort of, like, My man's up. using the sand devastan, let's go! 100%. Uh, he's <laughs> actually using acrobatics to reposition himself by flying two squares away as a reaction. Because I have acrobatics, baby, and you no. missed. Mm. I didn't so want, I really didn't want to miss. That was gonna deal fifteen damage. If it <laughs> yep, I had a feeling, Chief. I had a feeling. Oh this guy's not gonna live for another turn. <laughs> Unfortunately oh, for him. Damn it, dude. All right, fine. All right, uh, that'll be. So whoever that'll be, back to the players. That'll be Suki or Arbalist. Mind if I go fast? By all means, okay. go with your assassin. Suki's gonna have a fucking meltdown when she gets to her turn, so... <laughs> yeah, my, my turn's gonna be pretty bad, so probably what I'm gonna need to do is, like, basically take two turns in a row with, like, my turn at the end of the round and then at the top of the round. I'm going last That's next pretty round, fair. don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll handle my house over here. Um, so, over here, this guy, is he still here? Or is he... He's still here, right? Yeah, he is. He's just... He, uh, it's not likely he's surviving the turn. Granted, Cow he's literally yeah. going to start his turn and take 3d6 damage. <laughs> okay, Ca that's fair. Casually burning to death. <laughs> this right, is fine, he's just like having a cup of coffee. I'm just so, imagining Arkin isn't he doing any of this intentionally. She's just like pressing buttons on her mm. console. Just like, why does my gut keep going off? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Arbalest is going to, for this one, I just make sure I got this right, Okay, yeah. So, uh, he is going to lower his cannon at this guy and take a horrifyingly way over the top shot um, at him. So, we are I looking have at. should assassins mark your ass, god damn it. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, actually, you know what? We're not going to use that one. 
Uh, I have a different gun for this one. Um, he's actually gonna, instead of leveling, leveling the cannon, he's gonna hold his hands out, and they're gonna open up, and he's just gonna sort of, like, grin and wink, and the mech's gonna kind of just, like, turn, and its optics are gonna, like, shine on that side, as he's firing his quantum PPCs at this guy. So, quantum lock PPC, which is also known as a smart gun with overpower caliber. So, let's see what this guy's got. I've got accurate on this thing, so... Just as a baseline, so D6, plus the basic, uh, which that's not bad, actually. And on top of that, don't forget that it is a smart weapon. So, so I'm targeting against E-Defense. E -defense. Ouch. So that's going to do a 10 damage right now? Damn straight, as he Ooh. literally opens up his arms and his reactor just pours through and, <clears throat> again... Bright unlight and radiation fills the area as he just basically blasts this guy. Nice. Yeah, you, you the, he try, he attempts to move out of the way, but you tear like this massive like burn hole in his side, and he's he's still he's still hanging in there. But by hanging, I mean literally, because he's like literally falling in on himself. But he's he's still ready to go. He's still ready to tango. You know what? I that was a skirmish action. Do it again. Uh, I only have unfortunately I only have one. Um. I only have one of these things, and you can't double tap them, right? Like, you can't fire the same gun twice. No. Um, no. But. Throw helpy at him. Uh, actually, <laughs> I can try to punch him, can't I? Sure. It's just gonna do a. It's gonna do one damage, I believe. Hmm. Unless you have, like, the improvised thing. <laughs> that might be all you need. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> oh, I need, but I also afraid. don't particularly want to get in the melee with this guy if I can avoid it. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, you know what? He's going to use his uh, second. Yeah, he's going to use his second action to pack Helpy up. So he's going to sort of just like zam him, and as he does, he's going to turn over towards Helpy. I'm just going to hear a you know an ali ali like an ali ali oxen free whistle. And our pen immediately help. He's just gonna like look up. The arms are gonna retract. He's gonna leap onto his back and click on like a backpack. And he is then going to boost away. So I have my movement uh, of. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Help, he just went, that me. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> me. So that's fine. Um, do you have anything that ignores engagement range? Uh, I fly when I, I fly when I boost. Yeah, so. that's not gonna help. Uh, so let's make a shot here. Okay. You are provoking an opportunity attack, so let's see. Ah, oh, there was more than one. Bag. I had a feeling. Damn it, I can't have anything! <laughs> Did he miss me? Yeah. <laughs> he he oh. missed as you were trying to move away. Cool, I get to boost two more squares. <laughs> um, this is weird, I get to use my reaction on my turn, but there we go. Um, so go. as he's boosting away immediately, like his sensors on his, on his the interior of his mech, like, or really in his vision, just like flash bright red and he sees this thing lunging at him in multi-spectrum cameras and immediately his reactor just goes like, oh, you need more energy, boop, and like briefly spikes his power and he boosts a little further and sort of just like bounds over him and lands on the other side over there. Nice. One of these days, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you so hard your mech just fucking explodes. <laughs> this is it's gonna add up. Me. <laughs> I, I mean, you've beat me pretty it hard happened? before, Red. But yeah, you get a lot of shit in other games. It's okay for him to have one game that he doesn't get shit on so bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get shit on in all of these games because y'all are constantly trying to kill me when I'm the safest player on the table. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. All right, well, this guy's this uh this little guy natalie if you'd like to describe this guy turning into fucking actual slag oh nice dude i imagine that i probably held the trigger on the plasma gun a little bit longer than you're supposed to he <laughs> <laughs> was just like directly centered on him for a good like i uh, know 15 seconds or so you guys ever seen that video of the guy that finds a cockroach and he takes a blowtorch and he just like starts hitting yeah. it until it turns into nothing, but like yeah. a little bit of slag that just blows away in the wind? You just oh see God. Arkin like turn her back on this guy as he's like screaming, engulfed in flames, <laughs> melting, and she's just like fiddling with her gun like, 
why does it keep going off? Like, mm. what, what button am I hitting? <laughs> just like completely oblivious to this guy dying in the background. Nanite's run's gonna go away. <laughs> yeah, woo! That's not gonna yeah. stop you from taking heat at the start of your turn, though, Suki. Suki, you're going to take seven okay. heat at the start of your turn. Ooh, I I'm That's overheating. Cool. You're overheating. Yep. Okay, so that'll be two. Yeah, that'll put you to your max in your second row, so roll a d6 for me. Okay. Yee hee 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 hee. Oh, oh. Four. Destabilized power plant. You're exposed. Uh, you take double uh, kinetic, explosive, and energy damage until the status is cleared. Okay, can I just... That, oh, that, that means Arkin's gonna here? overheat too, actually, because she's gonna take seven. Uh, so you're gonna go under the 14 and overheat, unless you have something that stop. I think you can stop yourself from okay. overheating somehow. I'm not, I don't remember how. I think it's the first time you would overheat, but I think you might have to have your system engaged for that. Cool. Protocol. I'm sure NHP does something, I don't remember. Uh, looking around. So, uh, Suki, you're, you're at your heat cap right now. Uh, so, if you take any more heat, you're gonna overheat again. So. Okay, so. I never really have to deal with heat, which is, I'm sure, exactly why you put the fucking witch in here. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm finding I'm finding the rules for heating and clearing heat and overheating right now. It's, you you use a uh, stabilize. Okay, that's a full action, right? That's a full action to clear your heat. Yeah. Okay. See anything specific about? not taking heat or anything like that. Okay, I think it's something that you have to be active for, so you, you are gonna overheat here. Uh, so let's roll. Oh, actually, you can roll a d6 for me and see how you overheat. When the Genghis takes structure damage, it clears all heat? Yeah, well, you're not taking structure damage, you're just overheating on your uh, heat cap, so roll a d6 for me. Three. Ignore that, that was an X. Okay. Uh, you're also okay, exposed, so, so you just take uh, double kinetic explosive and energy damage. Until you're- that's cleared. So I'm gonna take a stress and clear all heat, or... And what- what's the deal? What do you mean? Uh... So heat cap and stress, you're... You take a single- uh, you take a stress because you overheat it. Yeah, so you lose and now I'm- yeah. Yeah, and then, um, let me see, so I'm down to three, um, but I shouldn't have any more heat unless I got more heat. It over, it goes over to the next one, so okay. you were, okay. you were at three, okay. took seven, so you went, uh, took two, and then add five, so you're at the next cap. Mm, yeah, okay. Same thing with damage whenever you're structuring. Damage tramples over. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> it is your turn. Okay, um, I'm gonna stabilize and clear all heat. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Shit. I do, I forgot something. It's fine. Uh, I believe that also removes the exposed condition. That's fine. Me, I'm we'll just say, we'll I'm just looking. say, this. we don't need to dig through the rules. Why is it enough time looking through book the book today anyway? Yeah, we'll just say you clear the condition and the heat, so movement. Um movement. I am just gonna move a bit this way. <coughs> Not quite oh. on the edge. Oh. Kinda this way. Trying trying to get closer to the witch. Which is gone. Remember Which that. is gone. She, she, she just like left. She yeah, blanked left out of off. existence. Yeah, not after, not okay. before doing something weird to uh, Arkin's tech. You're not sure what Arkin hasn't said anything. So, 
Oh, okay, in that case, well, then I'm gonna go this way, and then I'm gonna get a little bit closer to Arkin. So, let me see. I think there's something that I can do. Um... It looks like I don't need to go first at the top of the round, so... Whoever wants to go first, do your thing. To be fair, uh, Derek's dealing with an assassin, and yep. so is Omni. So I'm intangible, so I'm gonna go last. Yeah. Oh, okay. I actually have a, a thing that I need to mention before I forget. Red, I did have something to deal with being targeted by people in my in uh, melee. Yeah. Weave. The first attack taken as a reaction against you in any round auto misses. Oh, well, I would have missed anyway, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just let like, you know that in the future. Um, got it. So, I also apparently got to move two extra spaces because of Lockbreaker after skirmishing. So. Nice. Wait, wait. My man's screeching. <laughs> there we go. Schmoving. Uh, I'm good with waiting. I know I have two of these guys over here, but I put a fair bit of distance between me and them, I think. So, they're pretty quick, probably, but I don't think they're that quick. So. I literally just like almost triple boosted away after all my effects stacked. So yeah, by all means, someone else needs to go. Go ahead. Both. Uh, I'm gonna have these guys shoot. So both Arkin and Suki are gonna take eight. Uh, Arkin's gonna take five because she has armor, and Suki's just gonna take the eight. These guys shooting over here. Okay. Bad stop of the initiative. Unless you wanted to do something right, else. Uh, no, uh, I'm just gonna give Nat a leadership die. Tell Arkin to clean it up. Can do. Killing time. You want me to oh go boy, first, go or does someone someone else want to go first? Uh, I, I think also... everybody wanted to wait. So yeah, that's what I was asking. Like, yeah. I also have go one ahead. question, Red. Um, yep. That guy who took a attack of opportunity against me, does did he appear because he took a swipe at me? What do you what do you mean? You had a second guy take an attack on me, right? That, that was the same guy. Oh, okay, fair enough. Because you were moving out of his threat range, so that was. Oh, he's got a huge ass threat range. Okay, he's got a most yeah. shotguns have three and threat, so if you like move oh. out of it, it's just like you're fucked. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Okay, that's why shotguns are good. Shotguns are awesome. That's why I recommend Caliban, whoever's gonna take that next. <laughs> I mean... That thing's I literally a howitzer trusted. shotgun. It shoots 40 millimeter rounds. <laughs> yes. I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Move one, two, three, four. I think that's four. Yep. Um, how do I do can the measure? Can thing? you hit both of them? I don't if you know. boost, you could hit both of them. <laughs> yeah, you just need to be, get like a little bit closer so you can hit both oh. of them with the flamethrower. Oh, so awesome. if you wanted to overcharge and just take a single hit, that would probably be what I advise. Why not? Yeah. Right here. Heat time. What? <laughs> I hit the first one. I'm assuming yep. it does hit. Uh, it's a two plus three, and you have a leadership die as well. Yeah, what is that, a d6? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So that'll be a two plus three, so six. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna... I don't think that's gonna hit. Let me double check. Yeah, no, it's not hitting. The first one you're gonna hit, though. Okay. Um... You nice could game. place your burn patches over by him, though. Yeah, you could place a burn patch underneath him, even though you didn't have it. Okay. So you have three of them. So you're gonna put one here. Yeah. Then you can put them wherever else you want. Just ping the spots and I'll put them there. This guy, this guy's gonna get turned into fucking pulp. You literally rolled max damage, you rolled 14. <laughs> he's, he's gone, he just gets... Phew. It's like the Sorry. Smash Smash Ultimate intro where they all get fucking like vaporized and then nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and put one on the guy that's up behind him. Yeah, you can't reach that far. You're gonna uh, be able to reach like seven, so you can like reach okay. like that. Um. So. Let's do. Um. 
do one, like here-ish, so if he tries to go down, okay. it's gonna get burnt. That is fine. Okay, is that your turn? I think so. Gotcha. Uh, I'm gonna have this little fucker go, because he's like in pursuit. Little so fucker. He has... Motherfucker. Uh, let's see, he's got a speed of yes, no ones. As a quirk action, he can do something called leap. He can fly six spaces in a direction, but he must land on a surface. When they land, characters adjacent to the assassin must make an agility save. So Three, four, Perfect! Six! Okay, make an agility nice. save on me. <laughs> me? An agility save? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm just going to take life. a peek and make sure I've got this. Uh, so this is for the turn. Let's see, does soft cover give me any bonuses to this? Nope, this is this save. So I make all, agil I make all agility checks and saves with plus one accuracy because of acrobatics. Mm -hmm. So here we go! Uh, this plus the accuracy. Okay. 18. Uh, yeah, you succeed. Damn it. Okay. No, uh, when right. he when he does, uh, the so how does this attack work? What is it? It's just a save. There's no attack or anything. Oh, um, okay, that's fair. Yeah, I am going to attack you. <laughs> that's fair. I'm gonna fucking shoot you that shotgun, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm already. Okay, is there any penalties to this? You did move, so. Please tell me there's no penalties. <laughs> on either. Oh, on me? Uh, yeah, I didn't know who you were talking to. <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. I'm, 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 I'm attacking you right now. Okay, so. Let's see. You're attacking me with what type of weapon? Uh, what CQB. Is it? CQB? Shotgun. So, okay, he does have soft cover still because he hasn't attacked yet because it's the top of the turn. And on top of that, uh, let me just make sure if there's anything else. Um, yeah, that should be it. Finally. Finally! <laughs> You're going to take 15 damage. Oh, okay, that's fair. Uh, so that's 15 damage, which is yeah, going to immediately paint, put me paint, over paint, to paint, structure, paint, which means paint, I get paint, to... Paint. Paint. Roll paint. No, please, Rich. God. Damn. Please! Oh, we're good. Yes, thank God I can finally attack my lancers. Uh, yeah, okay, so roll finally it, yeah, attack roll your it. lancers. Have you seen our party? I'm the only one you don't reliably hit, and you still structured me three times in this game. Uh, Get over it. Anyway, so. No! I need to kill get? you. I need it to be challenging. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Red. That's not how it works. I want to kill you. I don't pull out a Bowie knife at a fucking, like, billiards tournament to make it challenging, Red. I do. Um, <laughs> I'm so, Irish, anyway. motherfucker. I make everything a challenge. I'm Irish, too, and I think you're crazy. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. um, All right. So how does the structure work again? Roll a d6. D6. Wait. Six. Glancing, Glancing blood. blood. You're, you're impaired, uh, but that's it. So impaired just means you have a d6 penalty to everything. Nice. Okay, cool. Good so numbers. once you structure, does the damage carry over? Yes. Okay, so I'm at 14 HP again. Yes. Sick. Okay, that's his turn. <laughs> cool. You may um, kill him now. I'm pleased. <laughs> I will absolutely dumpster him. Uh, I, will, I will smote his ruin upon the woods. Uh, that said, question, who hasn't gone yet? Me. Everybody except for Natalie. I um, I, I haven't... haven't gone. I oh, haven't... Really? Yeah, no, I haven't gone. Not... So, like, if you can't kill him, I can come help. You mean my guy? Oh, no, I'm he's gonna, fucking yeah, dead. Assassin. I'm just gonna be able to kill him. I he's fucking you. dead. <laughs> he, he's literally... He only lived temporarily. Um... If there's anything you guys need to do, feel free to take care of it. I've got this guy. Yeah, also, for the record, I'm Irish. We make driving harder by drinking while we're doing it. Like, Challenge it. So what is that? Oh what it's all God, about? Red. <clears throat> Please advise you don't actually drink while you drive. <sighs> God gives his silliest Not beers to his best by drunk this channel. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. The views are presented by Red. <laughs> <laughs> 
So whose turn is it? Whomever's. <laughs> God, we haven't declared it. If you guys, have, if no one cares or no one has anything that matters, I will absolutely dumpster this guy just to get out of the way. Yeah, I'm going well, last. Okay, uh, that's the case then. If you're good with it, then click you. Uh, plus the accuracy. Tell me, Red, does that hit him? Yes, it does. Cool. Uh, does six damage kill him? Yes. How do you want to vaporize him? <laughs> uh, so this guy shotguns. Uh, I imagine he just sort of runs up and shotguns him at point blank, to which he takes the blast. It just blows away chunks of his armor, and he just sort of rocks, holds his hand, holds his hand to his chest, looks at like the glowing light coming out of his reactor, turns over and goes, "I just finished patching that up," and then reaches over, grabs the guy by the head. And un un unfolds the arm at point blank range and just zams him until all he's holding left is like the top of the head uh -huh. and like the bottom of the feet and everything between is just a smoldering, brightly scintillating, glowing mass of like molten metal. <laughs> just gently pulls it off and drops it. Oh, just my one more. My minions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> actually, fun fact, that was a skirmish, so we're not quite done yet, I'm sorry, Red. I have oh, to be that guy. So he moves two inches, he still has his move, he's gonna yeah. use his he's gonna use his skirmish to boost. Burr, 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 which is gonna also get him to move down. a little bit more, because he did it again, because it's a skirmish. So he's gonna boost all the way over here. And Helpy is going to be riding on his back the whole time, like little metal arms hanging on, like backpack straps. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's gonna be him, man. That's it. My turn. <laughs> Run. Leap. He re doesn't realize you're intangible and he tries to like swipe at you and he like goes like right through you and it like collides into the sand and goes rolling. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, he's literally just gonna waste his entire turn just like swinging at you even though you you can't hit him and he can't hit you. Nice. I never said these things were smart. Suki. <laughs> or Derek, of course. Um... What I can do is top of your turn, Derek. I can give you a lock on for that guy. Uh, I was planning on doing a full repair. Full repair, you cannot do. You're gonna. You're, that's to stabilize, is what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. do that. Full repair would be. No, full repair. Literally, that would take ten hours. Ah. Full repair is just I like see. full full repair. That full it's repair also repair. involves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're field repair, so you're gonna use one of your repair guns. Fight. I need to do a full repair real quick. <laughs> <laughs> then in that case, I can do something about him. Okay. Yeah, okay, well, then top of your turn, I'll give you a lock on for him. Thank you. Nice. Cool. Damn it, I have a lock on the chat gave to me and I forgot about it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I could have hit you so many times up. <laughs> oh, man. The things you can't do anymore, Red. I feel sorry. <laughs> That's alright. I already punished you enough in Cyberpunk. Damn, Skippy, you do. Um, <laughs> Whose turn is it? Am I'm letting you do cool me. shit next session, though. So. <laughs> it, it, it's Derek's turn. Okay. Yeah. Derek, you can roll your d6 to see if you're still intangible. Uh, yeah. I think you need a lower than a. Th you need a three. I am tangible okay, now. So. <laughs> ah, cool. So now you can fight back. Indeed. <laughs> I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> you know you had to do it to him. No, I had to do it to him. Oh, no. That's not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> um, hmm, so I do have an accuracy. Do we have a reroll? Do we have a reroll? I don't know if we have a reroll. That's a great question. So that's a 13. I, uh, I am in. invisible as well, so I get double. Maybe I'll get a 6, which will make it a 14. I got a 14. Uh, isn't enough. Isn't enough. No. Well. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Uh, so in that case, uh, here's the second one. That's enough. <laughs> uh, he has already been damaged pretty significantly, so he's gonna be taking um, eight more damage there. That's half, so he'll take four. And we got some from chat, right? We got some bonuses from chat. You have a leadership die, don't you? Yeah, you have uh, a leadership die. Oh, I can use that on damage? Yes. Yep. Yeah. 
Pog O. Wait, if I use that on, um, yeah, I'll just take the damage then. So, so the the lock on is different than the leadership die. So that would be you're dealing eight, and then add four, so twelve, and we'll have that. So yeah, it takes six. Okay, is he dead? Nope. Okay, then in that case. Does my man? Yeah, he's. <laughs> in that case, I'm gonna run the fuck away. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Boop, I'm flying. I'm teleporting too, so he can't attack me. Yes. Damn. Yes, he, he cannot do opportunity attacks if he teleports. So. Do you not perceive me? What? Yeah. No, okay. So that is, uh, that was two skirmishes, um, or we'll call it a barrage. Um, it doesn't matter. It would have been the same amount of damage either way. Um, hmm. Well, actually, it would have been a D3 if I had used my fold knife, so I guess we, it will be skirmishes, but uh, that's fine. Um, I have moved, I have skirmished, um, twice, wait, did I have to, oh shit, in that case, did I have to, um, barrage without overcharging? Mm, so you haven't used a quick action other than right. attacking. So if you wanted to just barrage full action and then yeah. overheat to... Fuck. Damn. Oof. Okay, well, I take one more heat from ending my turn in the air. And then I need to roll a what? Uh, did you overcharge? Uh, to make two skirmishes and then uh, attack with my fold knife at the end there, yeah. D6. Let's roll low. I've been rolling a lot of high D6s. Okay, that's three. So Wait, okay, so you've, re you've reached your cap, but you haven't exceeded it, so you're fine. Nice. I think I'll have this guy take his turn and he melts into a literal pile of fucking slag right next to you. You literally just see him like melt into it, just become one with the slag. Uh, that is Suki's <laughs> turn. I don't I'm know if Suki can do to a guy that's. <laughs> that should be a shirt. Become one, become one with the slag. Yeah. <laughs> can you do anything yeah. to something 18 hexes away? Um. I'm thinking. What I can do is position myself, like, about... God, see, here's the trouble, is that, like, I am slow as fuck. Uh, like, my movement is literally three. Um... Oof. If I double boosted, that would put me here, and then he's still nine hexes away. I, I can't do anything about him except, like, keep him from getting close to Derek with my interdiction field. Okay. I am flying, by the way, so I don't know if he can fly. Yeah. He can leap. He cannot fly. Wow. That would be a mighty leap. He can leap six spaces. Um, so oh, he can do shit. it. That is a pretty mighty leap. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he can go very far. You're gonna go far, kid. <laughs> Damn. I oh, no, think we've done something different. If can we can him? keep him from screwing with Derek, then I can pick him apart at range. I, yeah, I think I'll just uh, I'll double boost to get over here to keep him from getting close to Derek. Because like the second he enters the the field, um, he's not gonna be able to move except regularly. So that would put me like. Nice. Here. I mean, like, cool. I'm gonna do, like, right there ish. So, unless he wants to throw himself so... off, of, like, to, off the rock. <laughs> yeah, like, you can still teleport and still, like, Alex can still move regularly. Um, enemies cannot. Mm. And so I'm gonna take a heat a... to double boost. Okay. So I'll put you at one out of five. Yeah. Okay. Okay, is that it for your turn? I might heal for four. Nice. That's fair. Whoops, I didn't mean to move you. And 
Yeah, no, I'm really like close range. I can't, I, I can't, can't do anything. Um, and oh, don't no, worry. Like... The, you close range people are gonna shine in the tunnels very soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay. Okay, yes. I'm gonna have really close space stuff, so you're gonna have some fun with that. Yay! I can move through enemies' All squares. Right, that's, that's good for me. All right, well, top of the initiative. This guy uh, can't do shit because it's you guys' turn. So, who wants to kill him? <laughs> that's pretty much the question. Danger again? Oh, it's kill him. Do you all mind if I kill the guy that hurt me earlier? Your call, chief. By all means. Um, if you don't kill him, I will. So, yeah, by all means, buddy, go ahead. I'm gonna go hit him probably three times again if two times doesn't kill him. Okay, see what you get, boss. God fucking damn it! God no. fucking damn it! No. God fucking damn it! No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy fucking! <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, it would be just just our luck, and then. Wow. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> you'd, you'd hear your calm crackle on, Gentry. Take him out. <laughs> Kill leadership die. Thank you. Oh, that's gonna suck for this guy. I'm so sorry, Derek. There's Damn. no words. There's no words Feels for that. Bad, <laughs> that. That is. Oh my oh, God. That, that, that is a become one with the slag moment right there. That is yeah. A one with the Luck slag. has turned. The worm has turned, gentlemen. Mm. So I overheat. Oh. Well done. How oh, did you? Yeah. Oh. Are Are you? Not only. Derek, I'm willing to let. I don't want to like punish you for this because this is just bad luck so i would be willing to say that we can ignore the last attack so you don't have to take a d6 plus four heat <laughs> okay thank you you're welcome okay that was just an unfortunate series of events i don't think you need to be punished <laughs> for three, it before, other than what i'm five. about to do here. jesus christ bro that's insane it's I'm pretty about, crazy i'm about to just actually go ape on you so that's oof i don't want to yeah. punish you further than i have to so let's see I'll, I'll try to clean him up off of you, buddy. In my hubris, I flew <laughs> like Icarus too close to the sun. Lol, he said. Lol. <laughs> oh, my cool. wings didn't melt, but man, I got a wicked ass suntan. All right. Um, he's gonna leap right back yonder, make an agility save for me. Uh, okay. Um, so that's gonna be over 20 because I get a, uh, my grit, which is, do, 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 I think two, um, two or three at this point, and then I get a plus one to agility checks and saves with the morning cloak. Okay, you're just gonna take five in structure. Okay, um, so let's roll the structure first. Two to 11. That's not ideal. Roll another d6. <laughs> Let's see. Structure. So you rolled a one. It was a direct hit. So you have three structure remaining. So you're just stunned. Um, okay. In... So does structuring occur at the same time as damage, or do I get to use my reaction before the uh, structuring occurs? Because my thing be says in response damage. to damage. It would be in response to damage. Okay, so exposed singularity, I get to teleport up to six spaces away, four spaces nice. away. Um, he just already leapt, so I'm just gonna go fly again, and I'm gonna guess that immediately takes me to nine heat. Um, what are you taking heat from? Uh, ending my turn or it being flying at the end of the round. I can't recommend that. Okay. <laughs> I really can't recommend like taking heat right now. You're gonna get your ass kicked. <laughs> I don't know what happens when you overheat because I've never done it. Uh, you roll on a table, and there's yeah, a one in six like chance your mecha dies. Oh, that's good. Uh, it's a little, a little more than that, but it's like a one in a one in thirty six chance. But there's a one in, yeah. I'm just gonna teleport down here. Yeah, yeah just teleport just... out of there. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. What does that leave him with? He left. He has movement still. Yeah, I could really brutalize you here. I don't want to pull oh. my punches. 
How far can you teleport? Four. 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 You couldn't have teleported further? Uh, that was down as well, isn't it? Oh. If you want to teleport, like, over, that would be further, but you'd also be in the air, so... Right, and then... I don't yeah, want to okay, land in the gotcha. slag. I want to end in the... What's up? I want to land in the burning metal. <laughs> so here's, here's what I'm going to offer you, Derek. So, it's either there's a chance you get hit for a fuckload of damage, mm -hmm. if you teleport onto the ground, or you or you're gonna overheat. So whichever one you think is worse. So you can fly if you teleport. That's fine. You're gonna take a heat for that, and you're gonna overheat and take stress damage. Yeah. Or you're gonna take. You, there's a potential. There's a chance you'll take a fuck ton of damage. I have stress. Do you want to risk that chance? What happens if I get stress? Stress is just like structuring. Uh, heat's, heat is essentially a second damage pool. And I can get a total of four. It's a d6 that you roll on stress. Yeah. Uh, but see, the thing is, you're going to keep continuing the mission. So if this happens again, it's going to get worse. And there's only a chance that this guy hits you. So there's a gamble here. It's either you take the guaranteed damage of like uh, overheating, or you risk the chance that this guy may or may not hit you with the shotgun that he's equipped with. I will shoot. tell you that once damage is shoot. super bad. He can shoot once, because he, he already once. used a quick action to attack you. So he's only going to be able to hit once. Also, this is th this shotgun is not accurate whatsoever. I'm rolling a flat D20 for this shotgun. I'll, 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 I'll break the... I'll, I'll part the curtains a little bit. Okay. Alright, I'll take the... You need a 13 up to hit me, so... Yeah. We have evasion of 13? Is it 13 or 12? 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Okay. Oh, You already rolled and you hit, didn't you? <laughs> I missed. No shit, really. I'm serious. I rolled a seven. <laughs> uh, All right. Nice. Yep. <laughs> right over here holding his cards. <laughs> <laughs> My heart rate. Uh, I like what? Yep. All right. So whose turn is it? <laughs> I can probably finish it off. Please God. Okay. Please God. He's uh, so, so agony. So, um, let's roll the damage. Quantum PPC. Let's go. Accuracy, in addition. It's already a crit. Eat D6. That's not that great, but still, that's... How did I roll? 23. S okay, okay, that's... Seven. Yeah. Against his E defense? Yep. How you want right. to kill him? <laughs> so, um, he's going to, uh, as he's sort of been boosting about this whole time, just like gliding, he's going to turn his head behind and like look at Helpy, who has been watching this unfold and watching you sort of teleport, wave dash, teleport, stab, shotgun, teleport, and uh, sort of like help you just makes like a whistling sound and like points a tentacle over and the little, little, little tentacles pointing down there. Right, we really should help him, shouldn't we? And he's gonna disengage his boosters, come to a stop, turn, rotate his arm, and again as he points it out, the hand's gonna open up and then the single beam of light blasts out changes at harsh 90 degree angles to conform with the uh, rock face as it comes down, travels on the ground, sort of goes up and zams through the guy and just sort of disintegrates into like pretty scintillating particles. Um, and your scanners immediately erupt with gamma warnings. <laughs> sort of retracts the beam back into his arm and locks it back in. Go right down there, Riker. If I could get cancer, we'd have words, but instead all I can offer is my thanks. I that was so terrible, I think it gave me cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope your mech is shielded against basic radiation. <sighs> Anything else left in there? Just my nope, that, I think You guys took prime. everything out. <laughs> mm. Just kidding. No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> You're I only structured once. I feel you, buddy. We're there. Okay, well, uh, you guys finished the combat, so... Hell yeah. Fuck you. You only structure it a couple of times. <laughs> only once. The first time I paint, I got paint. That's true. Yeah, you got yeah, your paint worked out for you. Hell yeah. Oh, that was pretty awesome, uh, actually. That was fucking sick. 
Hope mm. you guys got to enjoy your new toys. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't worry, there'll be plenty more of that uh, in the next session, which is also going to be combat related. So keep that in mind. Um, yes. Other than that, you guys are just going to be sort of like repairing up at your mini outpost and then heading into the heart of the beast. But uh, that's where we're going to end the session. Sweet. All right. Hell yeah. Um, well, thanks, Red. That was a lot of fun, dude. Thank oh, you, yeah. guys. Oh, man. I can't wait to do more cool shit with my mech. Fucking love that. <laughs> it's pretty sick, I will admit. Oh, yeah. I've gone from having to plot out and plan out everything to still kind of having to do that, but now I get to actually do a fuck ton of damage, and it feels nice. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. I'm about it. This new mech was made for me. It's my mech! It was made for me! Sorry, that's a good way to reference. Uh, <laughs> let's go through shoutouts, folks. Uh... Omni, where can people find you? Hey, folks. Uh, I'm the last Omnitech, your favorite robot American. You guys can catch me on my own Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash thelastomnitech. All one word. You can also find me on Twitter, at thelastomnitech, all one word. And on Instagram, thelastomnitech. You will find me everywhere with that same title. Uh, I'm on my own channel doing Twitch streams twice a week, including... Uh, world building streams on Saturdays, right, which are called the Stellar Forge. We had one earlier just this morning at 10.30 a.m. EST, where I did a little work on a, a Death Watch project, a Warmer 40k role-playing game, which I've been sort of wanting to revisit at some point in the future. So that was quite fun. I look forward to doing more of that art. You guys can also catch me on Thursdays, which I will be doing the Breakfast Club. We all hang out and have ourselves a little breakfast date with the TBTRPG community. So come bring something to drink, some coffee, a donut, whatever, and hang out as we play video games and talk about what's going on in the community. Other than that, keep an eye out for me. I'm going to be making a big move in the next couple of weeks, but after that, I plan on going truly full-time, opening my channel up and running not one, not two, but four simultaneous games in short order, including one on this channel on every other Wednesday. So, oh, yeah. fuck yes. That'd be me, buddy. Are we playing that this week, by the way? We missed it last uh, week. I was planning on us playing this week. Yeah, I'm down with playing this week. I was planning on it since it was the thing we missed last week. So, yeah, cool. I'm down with it. Cool. That way we can stay on schedule. Uh, some other uh, dark heresy goodness because we don't want to throw. Heck that yeah. Away. Also, so you folks know that game that I'm playing on this channel is Mouse Guard, which yeah. these guys are all part of. So please come tune in and watch them all be crazy and have fun. So, oh, yeah. God, I shall ask. Tiny little mice and big adventures. Hell yeah. You don't want to miss that. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesday. Uh, Red, what's happening, buddy? Hey, folks. I'm Red. I'm one of the three primary colors. I'm a content creator here on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, Twitch being Redemption VA and Twitter being VA Redemption. I'm running a bunch of games right now. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of stuff, and i got a bunch of projects in the works. Keep an eye out for a podcast coming up. We're going to be recording the first session uh, Tuesday. I can't give a release date just yet because uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of editing for that, a lot of like in-depth kind of stuff. Probably going to take a couple hours to get used to everything, but we'll figure it out one way or another. Uh, other than that, I am here every Saturday uh, doing either Covet Syndicate or Running Lancer here. Uh, and Thursday is going over on my channel is Cyberpunk Red, 2 p.m. CST. Uh, Omni is a part of that, so we're a bunch of other wonderful folks. And uh, we're nearing the end of that, end of season one. Uh, I would like to do another season because that would be a lot of fun, just doing like a time skip or whatever. Uh, we'll figure it out as things go on. But in the meantime, uh, every other week, uh, alternating with Cyberpunk is Call of Cthulhu, uh, kept by Derek and every single one of the players here, say the least. Uh, we're all playing in that, and we just had a fucking wild mm -hmm. session. So go check out the VOD for that over on my channel. Um, <clears throat> and um, also, I'm writing a TTRPG, and I'm going to be participating in NaNoWriMo. And uh, I got a lot of writing to do. <laughs> like, I got a lot of writing to do. I just, I just hit twenty five thousand words of the book, so it's like yeah, we're 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 getting there. But holy fuck, is it going to take forever? <clears throat> Thanks for the hydrate, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Sick. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Elise, what's happening? At least, At least might be up. She might be having a what? Yeah. Not sick or a, a sick, not good time. Okay. Um. Well, check out Elise. She's an artist and uh, creative. She has a blog that you can follow. Uh. She does a lot of really good art. She has commissions that are open, I believe. So absolutely, go uh go pay her money to make some 
high quality top tier art uh fantastic stuff you can find her twitter right there um and uh is there anything else that she normally plays i think that's it she's also a blogger and that's all linked on her twitter page so sick yeah go check her out she's awesome we love elise uh natalie you're muted natalie it's that kind of thing Still you're here. still muted still muted no? Yeah. Uh, now you're okay. good. Sorry, I forgot I had turned it down well, a while ago. Um, you can find me here every other Saturday as well, um, either playing our 5e game Booty and then later Lancer or Covet Syndicate on the alternating Saturday. This Wednesday we'll be playing Mouse Guard with these awesome people. Um, Friday, playing zombies with soul uh derek red elise uh so that's gonna be a lot of fun oh and jj of course can't leave jj out no and then next saturday covet syndicate oh yeah otherwise i'm on twitter at lidzozo beans and yeah, that's about it awesome thank you <laughs> well Love you guys. Love you, Omni, Red, Elise, baby. I love you, uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Red, for putting on such a fantastic stream, fantastic game. I love it. Lancer is so much fun. You make it so cool. I, I love thank killing bugs. I love killing The only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> agree. Uh, would you like to learn more? Uh, on... <laughs> Next Saturday, you can catch us live with uh, some more stuff. Uh, if you like what you saw, um, you can catch us live tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time with Heart of an Empire. That's a Legend of Five Rings 4th Edition actual play hosted by Lost Haven Art. On Monday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, you can find me hosting uh, Death Roll right here live. Uh, it's a high-level Spelljammer campaign, uh, super villain campaign, uh, for lack of a better term. On um, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we have Mouse Guard, hosted by the lovely The Last Omnitech right up there. On Friday, Souls Rolls hosts uh, Friday Night Zombies, so don't miss that at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Friday. Next Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, you can catch us live with Blood War, hosted by Ampersand D20. And then at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next Saturday, you can catch us right here with Covet Syndicate, our homebrew uh, 5e campaign. Good night, everybody. We're raiding into Gamer Mom Luna. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.